All right. So. Yay, I got all the wool felted. I didn't get every single skein of wool felted. That would have taken me weeks um, to get the entire skein felted. I didn't have enough storage to do that. So I got like Ziploc, Ziploc bag sized amounts felted. I just hope I have enough to at least get through week one. Um, or at least project one. So um, I'm going to be having the tutorial in the bottom corner there play a little bit um, it's not gonna be running constantly I'm gonna have to keep pausing it but I'm not I have it so that the audio you guys won't hear it so um, since the audio shouldn't be coming through because I have um, music playing in my ears so I have desktop audio turned off uh, you guys feel free to load up whatever music you want to listen to in the background or you can also load up the tutorial I picked out season three this time for uh, what I'm gonna be following sorry there's something on my keyboard tray so um, we're gonna be following season Bob Ross's season three joy of painting Sorry, I need to look at my keyboard for this because uh, I can't type with my one finger with uh, the finger protector on because it won't bend right. So <laughs> it took me way too long to get everything typed out earlier with uh, this on and then I finally gave up and took it off. And I just put it back on and I'm not finally taking it off again for three seconds. So it's going to be um, season three, Joy of Painting. Uh, the tutorial, the full season is on YouTube. Um, so I'm just going to be playing small snippets of it down in the corner just to see um, where we need to be and so you guys can see what I'm trying to replicate. Um, I was going to try to go 8 by 10 I thought that um, these felt squares were 9 by 12 um, Apparently not, so um, the sides are a little short, like the, it's a little short, it's not quite eight, so I'm like, okay. Um, Alright, so I marked off some edges for myself, so I know not to go past that point. Um, or at least I know where my cutoff should be, roughly. So it is a little bit bigger than my pad, and that is fine. Um, I'll just pick it up and slide it over as we go. Not a big deal. So um, I might mark out roughly where um, we're going to stop the, the sky just so that I know where I'm not going to go past. But um, I figured we could do that together here. So, um, actually, I'm going to have to do this off of the pad. Oh, I forgot you were attached. Okay, so let me just set the pad to the side for a moment. And I'm going to, even with a T-square, I can't draw a straight line, I swear. Okay, let me get that lined up. Alright, so let me... Alright, so that's kind of straight. I mean, it's not going to be 100% perfect. Because, you know, fiber's going to do what fiber's going to do. But we can at least try. So, uh, I'm going to hit play on the tutorial. And we're going to get a little bit in. I'm just going to skip through the main intro just a little bit. So, because he's doing the spiel about... Um, about uh, the, the liquid white and everything so that's not really going to apply here and I know I'm using a teal isk color that's kind of just the color I pulled out of the package it's a multicolor pack of felt I got but you know what it should be okay um, so it looks like there's gonna be kind of yellow in the middle I might have to jump forward just a little bit 
Okay, there is water, so maybe about halfway-ish? A little bit? Um, because we will have to tailor what we're doing a little bit differently than how Bob is doing it because we're not using paint. We can't blend our colors like paint's going to blend. There's going to be a little bit of difference, probably a lot of difference between what we do and what Bob does, but at least it will give us sort of an idea. So about half way ish sort of maybe so I'm not even sure if I am putting a mark down here Did it mark? Yeah, okay. So that's a little, little less than half, but that's okay. That'll give us a little bit of wiggle room. Oh my goodness, anything ever happened to my index finger? I'd be in a lot of trouble. Okay. All right, let me grab my pad again. All right, so we kind of have an idea of where we want to be. So he started out with yellow, right? Um, and then kind of went into this um, reddish, pinkish color. I think, it, I don't know if it was lizard and crimson, crimson. It might've been actually permanent red. So, um, and it kind of looks like almost Prussian blue in um, in the background there. Let me see if it doesn't quite look like um, like phalo blue. So let me see. I'm looking at my colors that I've got here. I've got sort of Oppression blue. It's kind of like a gray blue. Um, we don't have to go with the exact colors that he's doing. And we probably won't be able to go with the exact colors just because of what I have versus what Bob has. So, I mean, I tried to get pretty close. So, I think we're going to go with um, a sky blue. It's a little lighter, but that that's okay. Um, because my yellow is sort of a golden yellow because the color yellow I wanted, <laughs> they were out of. So I was like, oh shit. <laughs> so I kind of have to go with that yellow. I mean, I do have a slightly paler yellow in my other set of wool, but I kind of wanted the colors to be, um, the same-ish throughout the series, so we're just going to wing it this way. And then I've got, I've either got deep red or light rose, and I think deep red's not going to look right, so we're going to go with light rose. Um, so the yellow is definitely going to be the predominant color. In, um, in the sky here for us. And that's okay. We can go a little bit off of, um, of what Bob's doing. So I think, now Bob had started out with, um, with his yellow. I think we are gonna start out with our blue. Sorry, I've got a nail here that suddenly is driving me crazy. There we go. Okay. So yeah, I think we'll start out with our blue. Now I'm going to turn this a little bit. So apologies. These feel kind of like cotton candy 
without the sticky. So, um, yeah, it was all kinds of floof. It was a floof of palooza in here in the past week and a half. And I don't have to worry about skimping too hard because I've got more. And no way, no, uh, no way out of wool. So, just gonna kind of that it looks almost white against this color um, so we might have to double it up I mean we could do a little bit of like the um, the darker blue and then put some of the lighter blue on top we, we could do that that's that's totally an option um, just to kind of give that a little bit more of a, a pop to it. So I'd be I'd be okay with that. So I'm just gonna some of them felt it a little better than others depending on the shade. It was kind of strange. But I was like, eh, okay. That's fine. We'll we'll go with it. I mean, we kind of have to, but... Alright, now I'm going to come over the edge here. Just a little bit. Just to, um... Make sure that we've got some... Some room to work with. And if you wanted to do the larger... The larger needle, then, hey, go for it. Um... Just, I'm not a big fan of that that big guy. I don't know why, I just I don't prefer him very much. Now I had done a test with one of the first colors that arrived and I liked how it went, but this is my first um, my first project doing this with the um, with the wool. The, with the uh, acrylic yarn that we uh, felted, so. Or that we turned back into what it was before it was spun, shall we say. So this project, um, since we're needle felting, we probably won't be finishing a, um, a project per week so this is probably going to take a, a few weeks to get through and I am definitely okay with that. I hope you guys are too. This is going to be one of our larger projects that we've worked through. to be pulling it up at times so just because our pad is not quite big enough I was thinking of trying to do five by seven but then I was kind of like you know Smaller would definitely ensure that we have enough um, materials to complete the season. But at the same time, you know, we're already working small. And I just, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go quite that small. I mean, we did okay, 
um, working on the last needle felting project that we did. Um, I still have to get that one a frame. I haven't had the chance to do that yet with everything that happens. So I still have that guy. Yes, the stab, stab, stab. <laughs> it's a great way to work out your your aggressions. Um, so this is the last needle felting project that we did off of a um, reference photo. So uh, I still want to get him in a frame. I just haven't had the chance to get out and get one because of the husband's uh, emergency surgery and all of that shit. So a little behind on all of the things. So yes, we get to stab. Carefully stab. Make sure you have your finger protectors because these guys are sharp and they hurt. <laughs> I've only just just nicked my skin with them and managed to stop it in time, but uh the little notches in there are not gonna feel good if you go too far into your fingers, so. Just be careful. I actually have another one for my thumb. If uh, my thumb starts to get a little too close to what's happening. It was kind of funny. Um, I have my brush of doom. <laughs> it's just a it's a pet brush. It's a sticker comb to help get the undercoat off of your dogs that have the double coats. That's what I used to uh, felt the 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 uh, yarn to turn it from its yarn state back into floof. Um, and I'd actually ripped up my thumb pretty good. Uh, there's a slight red mark there um, from. The, the comb like going over my thumb how I was holding it and my dumb ass is like oh I should put on my finger protector that'll work and then it started to rip up the the, uh, the leather finger protector I'm like oh I need that for other things so let, let's not do that so uh, I just started holding the uh, the yarn a different way I was almost done so it was like my, my thumb actually took quite a held a pretty good uh, amount against the amount of abuse it went through um, for for fluff prep shall we say so I'm gonna end up going off the edge here at some point just to make sure that we've got the edge covered. So we will see. I mean I could use the other guy. I just I don't like the the one of doom. It's kind of intimidating. And it actually kind of makes my hand tired. Um, this one's a lot lighter with it just being the single needle. So, um, and the, the handle's a lot lighter too. This guy, he's got a little bit of heft to him. I have him out just in case. And sometimes I will use him to like finish up a section or to finish up when I'm done just to make sure everybody's attached. He's dangerous. He came with bubble wrap around him. So he's he's a, an eight needle guy. One, two, three, four. Yeah, eight. He's, he's a beast. So I don't quite have enough down to really justify using him at the moment. So we're just gonna tuck him back. Back there. for the time being. So I figure we could probably put this color down. 
and then maybe do the lighter color on top of it a bit. And then we'll we'll work down to where our yellow is gonna go. Do, do, do. So you guys are more than welcome to follow the tutorial if you want to try this or if you even just want to just paint it um, or you just want to watch it um, in its entirety. And that's over on YouTube. Uh, just look up Bob Ross and it's under his playlists. It's um, season three, episode one. I'm going to try to do most of season three. There's one painting though that I'm going to skip, mostly because I didn't have um, enough, enough funding available to get all of the colors I needed for it. And uh, that was the... Um, the campfire one where um, he uh, he did the cowboy against the tree you need a full plate steel gauntlet go with you full on it yeah you know if I could uh, if I could function with the rest of my fingers with one of those on or um, like one of those Kevlar Kevlar uh, gloves for the kitchen. Well, no, those got holes in them. I could go through there. So yeah, I would need the the full metal gauntlet. So I was thinking, oh well, you know, what about the chain gloves that you know you can have on your hands when you're using sharp knives or like the mandolins? But those do have the little the little holes, so that wouldn't work. I I would end up you know stabbing myself through the hole, so. I know me. I know me too well. All right. So let me see. I'm just gonna tap in my edge, tack that down, just so I know how far over I am working. And you guys don't have to put the lines in with the pen. I just kind of did that for me. Gives me a little bit, um, just of a better guideline to follow. Now once we start to get into the other colors and we get a little bit more, um, fiber down here. I might pull out the other guy, the big one, and uh, use that just to help get stuff tacked down a little bit faster, but we'll see. I'm not in a real big rush with this project. And honestly, working with sharp things, you probably don't want to rush it just be better off to take your time. And I might, um, I try to archive most of the live streams over on YouTube. So since I know, um, the needle felting sessions can be a lot. I might actually um, do a full speed paint plus the full length tutorial. So I might have to um, download each of these and hold on to them and then edit them together when we're all done. And um, all of the art stuff that I send over to um, YouTube, is on the playlist on my channel. Same channel name is here. Um, that's all going to be on one specific playlist, like all of the art stuff, and that's on the Nisi Paints playlist.
thinking of separating it out into different categories. But it's just, it's all together on that one playlist. Okay. So I'm thinking we need a little bit. Yeah, because it just looks a little too light. I mean, we might just go with this color and skip the other one. I mean, we could very well do that. I mean, it's not too far off the, uh, the rose color. I'm just sneaking this up a little bit just to get it a little bit more manageable, I guess. Because some of it came off the brush um, in floofy sections, like um, like shedded sections, and then um, some of it was just the actual strands, but waste not, want not. We can make that work. That's more than fine. You've never felt it, but you've gone through your fingernail a few times with things. Oh, yeah. I can imagine. I I almost, um, I had a run-in with an X-Acto knife many years ago when I was trying to build a dollhouse kit. Um, saw my thumb in the way. Didn't register that I needed to move my thumb for some reason. Um... So that was, that was something. And uh, had another incident with a kitchen knife when I was cutting um, baby carrots. Again, saw my finger in the way, my thumb again. And for some reason, it didn't register in my brain that where I was going to put the knife and where my thumb was was going to be a problem. Just It just did not sink in whatsoever. And <laughs> until the knife went halfway through my thumbnail and I was like, oh, problem. I probably should have went to uh, the ER for that. I didn't. Um... That was the one that I finally clicked where I really need to watch what I'm doing with kitchen knives. But, um, like a lot of people will do the little felted animals and figurines and stuff. Um, for that you're probably I mean, I think some people use the um, the acrylic wool, acrylic wool, the the acrylic yarn. Um, but I've heard, I've seen it said where you still want to use a little bit of the actual wool roving in the middle if you're gonna use the acrylic yarn. Um, I have some wool roving. I do. I just didn't have enough for this, for what I wanted to do. So, um, and for my money, <laughs> the roving is expensive. Uh, my ass is broke. Um, like, like seriously broke. Um, <laughs> we're, we're fighting for, to get the husband, uh, on disability and that's a whole nother another can of issues there and um so we're we're fucking broke and uh 
there was a yarn sale I'd gotten some money for Christmas and uh, for art supplies on top of the uh, felting stuff that I did get so I was like oh okay well I'd seen it said that you can use acrylic yarn and I was like hmm okay and I'm like well how do you use it do you just use it straight and just you know felt the strings or I mean I guess you could that would be an interesting look um but then other people were saying to get uh, one of those sticker brushes and just brush the wool that way. And I was like, huh, all right, I can do that. Um, it's a lot more prep and people like just buy the wool roving. It's, it's, it's a lot less to deal with, but the roving, um, what I was seeing was a lot more expensive and didn't have the colors I was looking for so I was like all right well if that's not the colors I'm looking for that's not gonna help me so um, I was looking at wool and I was like you know what yeah it's gonna be a lot of prep but I can do this I have the time I, I can prep the, the wool that's or the the yarn I was like that shouldn't be a huge thing and it really wasn't that bad and um, when I was looking at yarn prices I was originally looking on uh, like walmart.com and they at the time I was looking they had the cheapest prices that I had seen and I was like well you know I could probably get some and I'll just have to get a little bit over time you know not a not a huge deal and then um, Joanne Fabrics was having a, a yarn sale, like a huge yarn sale um, on their website. Was it the beginning of January? I'm not sure if they're still having it. Um, where they had a house brand of yarn called Big Twist that was 100% acrylic. And that was 50% off. And I was like, ooh, damn. And I got uh, some, some decent sized skeins of yarn for, for $1.99 each. So I was able to pick up um, 21 colors. I would have liked to pick up a couple of more. Um, However, because all of the colors I wanted weren't um, available for curbside pickup, I had to pay for shipping, so there was a couple of colors I didn't end up getting that I was like, well, they would have been nice to have, but I think we can work around without getting them, which is why we're skipping the campfire episode one um, a little bit further into the series because I couldn't get orange. So, but that's okay. That one was like mostly just a solid sheet of like orange and red happening and I was like oh all right well not much to uh, see there for needle felting wise it would just be like solid solid colors there I do like this um, this acrylic stuff going in um, it seems to be not quite as frizzy so far. I mean, it's a little frizzy, but it's much softer, I think, than um, the other roving that I had gotten a multi-pack of. And it, the multi-pack price wasn't bad, but you just didn't get, like you got a hundred colors, but you didn't get that much. 
of the colors. So I think it, maybe it wasn't 100. Maybe it's 50. I don't remember. I've got a lot of little, little tiny bags of fluff everywhere, but it just wasn't enough of any one particular color to do this. Um, cause there's so much green, so much blue. Um, if I had gone with just the other roving I had, we'd be back to working on like the four by four size stuff. And um, I, I really want it to go a little bit bigger. Granted, going bigger takes a little bit more time, but I'm okay with that. That's all right. Okay. So that's it's laying in there. Do, 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 do. All right. So we will. I'm just kind of trying to sneak this out just a little bit. Kind of like when you made snakes out of clay. If you ever did that in school. Alright. So we'll get this one. Just trying to make sure that we get this top edge covered here. couple sections tacked in here. Now I'm probably going to have to get a bit more of this color fluffed for um, the next project because the next um, episode is a very dark episode um he episode two is a nighttime scene i think it's a nighttime beach with um palm trees in the moon and it's on a black canvas and i was debating whether or not i wanted to put it on a black piece of felt because i do have a black piece um or if I just wanted to put black wool down and then work the other colors up off of that. And I'm kind of leaning towards putting the, um, the black wool down. I feel like, are we on? Or am I felting to the pad? <laughs> I might be felting to the pad here. Yeah, a little bit. All right, that's okay. I could not felt to the pad itself. There we go, I think, yeah, okay. Kinda hard, cause I couldn't see that top edge that well. With the angle that I was on. But that's okay. So um, this is one of the shades that I need for that, but that's alright. I made sure I saved all of my, uh, my wrappers that came off of the yarn and I was cutting the color names and putting them in each of the bags that I uh, stuck all of the uh, yarn into. So I kind of had an idea of what color I was using in case I need to, um, well, for when I inevitably need to order more. 
That way I know what color I just used up. I figured if I left it on the yarn ball, then um, I would probably end up losing it or end up falling off. But I feel like I'm running a stall at like the boardwalk or a county fair or something because I have a um, a bar across the ceiling near my work area that has um, a curtain that I can pull off uh, across to uh, close off the area if I just want to not be bothered by a bunch of stuff and. Um, I have all of these Ziploc bags <laughs> uh, clothes pinned to the edge of my curtain and it just, I feel like, oh, hey, come and get your cotton candy. And I know it's not cotton candy. It just looks like it. But now that I'm done getting the bulk of the yarn felted, now I can go back to working on my other project that I've been trying to work on off of stream. Um, and I can spend some more, some more time on that. So that'll be nice. To uh, get back to work on that guy. Oh my gosh! One of the um, one of the news stations locally had to put out a story. Um, warning people that if they see a line of lights in the sky tonight to not be alarmed and that it's not it's not aliens it's Starlink satellites that they're positioning are repositioning in orbit or something and that it's totally fine don't panic, it's not aliens, it's satellites. We know what's going on. I was like, oh my. I'm like, do people get that panicked about that? I mean, I guess it was interesting. Oh, hey, Kay. Key, key. What exactly are you doing outside of poking things a lot? Um, anytime they say it's not aliens, it's always aliens. Um, we are doing needle felting. We're painting with wool. So we are attempting to follow a Bob Ross tutorial, but uh, we're gonna move much slower than Bob. So I have it on pause right now. We're just kind of working on our sky. It's gonna take a little bit. It's not going to be a fast and furious to the finish here. K was correct. K is... Okay. I always mispronounce that. Always. Alright. So we'll get this kind of poked in here. So we are painting with wool. Probably a lot safer than my oil paints, especially when it's cold out and I can't, uh, and I can't have the window open to 
for proper ventilation. This doesn't involve any potentially questionable safety-wise paint materials or paint thinner or all that. I mean, I do have it. I still have my oil paints from the last stuff that we've done. But uh, this also doesn't have a smell. Don't feel bad, it makes you laugh a bit every time. <laughs> so, this is less likely to uh, bother or trigger a migraine for me. on getting our sky put in. Here a bit. The top edge is always a little a little fussy. Just trying to get that covered in here as best as we can. So how goes things today? It is Sunday, for me at least. Should be Sunday for you as well. right in here is being a little extra fuzzy. Sorry, it sounded like somebody was moving around. I wasn't sure if it was a cat getting into trouble or what. Sunday here in Kansas, or at least do you think you're still in Kansas? We haven't had a tornado for a while. Yeah. Well, that's good. Those aren't fun. I hate it when we start getting tornado warnings. Be a little bit better if we had a tornado shelter, but that's you do not. You would think that houses that are built in understanding correctly you're trying to do a Bob Ross painting without yes yes you would think that um, yeah so instead of using a uh, traditional oil paints we are trying to follow along with uh, one of his tutorials like for using um, yarn wool needle felting whatever you want to call it um, but yeah totally wish that there was a requirement for houses built in areas 
that have tornadoes a fair bit or are under tornado watches a fair bit came with and you know basement and or a uh, panic room or tornado shelter of some description you would think and I think some towns are starting to do that but uh, I just wish it was more commonplace so that would be a tough challenge I don't know I think we can do it I think we can do it it might look a little different um, where we probably won't have the exact same sheeting, but I think we can do it. I do think it's possible, but you know, our colors will be a little different and it'll take a little bit longer. Probably a lot longer than, you know, Bob's half an hour but um, that's okay. I'm not trying to get it done in his time parameter. I'm just, I just wanna try to do it. All right, you know what? I'm not sure if I'm using this color after all, so let me tuck that away. Let me close that bag so that wool doesn't escape too much. Come on. Alright, I'm going to tuck you over there for right now. So we'll pull out a little bit more floof. Do I have a squirrel? Not a pet squirrel. I have enough cats, though. We have the, the two cats and, uh, no, we have the two dogs and the other multitude of fuzzy creatures. We have squirrels outside, though. I actually had one that was clinging to one of the screens on our front porch. Um, like, our the one window in our bedroom faces our front porch. And I kept hearing this noise, and I was like, what is this noise? Um, couldn't figure it out for the life of me. And I finally ducked my head outside, and there's a, a young squirrel. I don't know if I would classify it as a baby, but it was definitely young. And it was clinging upside down to our screen on our window. And I think he was trying to get my attention, he or she. Um, because we didn't have any more bird food outside. The, the birds had eaten it, or they had eaten it. Someone had eaten all of the sunflower seeds that we had out, so. Yeah, I know, we're, we're doing it without the squirrel. So we're already up against one, one challenge there, but we're gonna try to carry on. I don't know if I uh, can sew together a fake squirrel. I'm not that good at sewing. If I was better at three at a uh, 3D felting, the little figurines. We could try to make a felted squirrel, but um, I'd have to watch some tutorials on that. And see if what all is involved with the uh, figurine felting, because I have not attempted that yet. So maybe, maybe down the road we can, 
we can attempt to do that. Yes, I have seen, um, I believe I've seen some of his stuff. I think. Is he the one that they've started putting on the channel now that's doing, or is that Dana? Um, it might be Kevin. Um, that's, uh, started doing, like, hour-long uh, sessions that they've got a couple videos up on uh, on the Bob Ross YouTube channel he's pretty good if it's if it's the same guy I'm thinking it is I might be thinking of somebody else okay because I know they've got somebody else painting um, periodically um, that they're putting videos up on the Bob Ross channel for and um, he did a Bob Ross birthday marathon one day or they, they were showing him teaching a class live somewhere or, or it was a recording of I'm not sure if it was 100% live it might have been live um, he was doing trivia and stuff and I do like that with and I can't remember this new guy's name. It might be the same one. Um, but uh, they're they're letting him go for an hour now with the YouTube format because it's not being aired on TV. So they're not restricted to um, the half hour time slot that they had been when it was on PBS. Because I'm sure they also probably had to pay for those time slots as well. But if they have their own YouTube channel, they don't have to uh, pay for the time block, so he can take his time. I'm trying to remember what that dude's name was. I could go look, but then it's going to get weird with how my whole setup is at the moment. I will have to look at that. Actually, the one screen might not be affected. I probably could look real quick. I just have to make sure what screen I'm clicking to go look. Okay, I mean, we've got a little bit of that green coming through, but it's not too bad. Alright, let me go check real quick. I haven't checked out the Bob Ross YouTube channel in a while. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, YouTube doesn't have the the um, the time length anymore. I've got like four and five hour art streams that I have um, exported over to there. So give me one sec. Let me um, bring that up just real quick. Um, Oh, what is his name? Uh, he's right there, but I'm not sure. What's our name? Let me mute that. Although it's not really coming through there. Does it? Does it have his name? Oh, it's Nick. That's this guy's name. It's Nick Hankins. He's pretty good. They've, um, they've got him, um, doing some stuff on, on Bob's channel, or on the Bob Ross channel. Should probably not have that in my hand while I'm trying to do this. Alright, so we need a little bit more blue before we get into our, our pink here. I'm going over the edge of where I want to um, have my cutoff there just a little bit. 
That's just for me. So I can keep track of where I am. And it gives us a little extra leeway room to work with when we go to finish everything up. Nick Hankins. He's pretty good. I like um I like the time that he takes. I definitely like the longer format cuz it gives them a chance to to really explain what they're doing and it just doesn't feel as rushed. If you've not heard of him, you might check that out. And you find this magical thing called time. Yes, time. Time's been tough to find lately. I, I will say that. I will say that. I'm not used to having to do um, most of the stuff around the house without help. So this past... Um, this past week and a half has been pretty tough. I mean, I know that you're doing like 25 different projects at once. Um, but yeah, I've been having trouble finding time to get the regular stuff done, let alone extra. But yeah. If you ever find a moment, that's the one nice thing about YouTube. You can, you can start to watch something and then, you know, if you don't finish it, you can come back and finish watching it later. Because it'll be in your watch history if you don't clear it. And it's like, oh, where was that video that I was watching? Oh, yes. Because finding time to do all of the things. Has been tough. And I know it's tough. It's not easy some days. Cause, I mean, you, you certainly have your, your plate full with all of the stuff that uh, you're working on. And that's for sure. I actually heard, had not heard of um, Nick until well, it was a little while ago. He just kind of showed up on the Bob Ross channel. I'd seen that there was a new video up and I was like, oh, what is this? And uh, I'm like, who is this guy? And uh, I think they started um, having him do stuff right before um, a lot of the pandemic stuff kind of kind of took off and um, then he couldn't really travel to New York I think they were recording it in New York honestly um, it sounded like I don't think he was able to travel there for a little while I don't know, I guess maybe his, he didn't have an area that he could set up to record it and then send them the video. I don't know. Or they just wanted a more produced product with multi-camera angles or something. That's possible. on our next section here. So we're gonna bring in um, 
We're gonna bring in the pink Sue. Cause there's there's a fair amount of pink in there. It doesn't really seem like there's that much blue. There's a there's a taste of blue in there, but it does kind of seem like it's more of a a yellow and pink party. So I did start a little bit early today, just because I was planning on going a little bit longer with today's stuff. It's cadmium red and titanium white. I know, but I don't have those colors. I have white and I have deep red, but we kind of have to do the, the, the blended color not the starter color. We kind of have to do the finished product. I forgot the liquid white too. Like I know this is just a lot of repetitive motion and it does take a bit longer doing it this way, but I kind of I kind of like doing this just because, you know, you kind of almost not really enter a trance, but it just feels a bit more, a bit more calming and you do have to focus a little bit on what you're doing so you don't stab yourself. But, uh, I don't know, I kind of like this, this type of, uh, art a bit better. I mean, I'll probably still, I'll most likely still paint regularly, um, but I thought I had another little piece. Don't know where it went. Maybe I used it. But, um, I don't know. I kind of like this. Only happy accidents. Yeah, I mean, we can kind of fix anything. If we're not happy with it, we can always change it. Or, hey, this is the direction our brain wanted to go in. I actually had a piece that I royally fucked up with oil paint. Um, it was my first time really playing with the liquid black and um, I was trying to follow one of the tutorials offline I think and um, trying to get my feet under me with it and I was just like eh, okay we'll try it and I was really kind of unsure and I wasn't sure if I'd had the liquid black stirred enough and um, I just, I was really unsure with it because it seems kind of runny and I was just like, I, I don't know if I'm doing this right. And um, I think I'd had too much of it on the canvas because I was doing one of the little mini guys just to test it out. And I was trying to follow what he was doing and I started to get some of the other colors down. And I was just sitting there looking at it. I'm like, this looks nothing like what he's doing. And I was getting frustrated. I was like, you know what? Don't get frustrated. Let's just wipe everything off and we can start over. It's not a big deal. Um, so I kind of scraped everything off the canvas and, and wiped it down. And then I was sitting there kind of looking at it. And I was like, you know what? 
let me see something. And I had scraped some some white-ish lines into it that kind of looked like trees. And then I kind of finished out the bottom where it looked like snow. And that was like one of the better abstract, sort of abstract paintings I had ever done that I was actually really happy with in the end. It was nothing like what Bob's was because I kind of gave up <laughs> on that particular one when I was going to start over and then it just kind of became its own thing and Anna was like, okay, I don't hate this. And it grew on me the more I was looking at it and the more I was doing stuff to it and I was like, you know what, hey, this is how this one's going to look now. So it worked out. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Alright, so we'll get a little bit more of this blue in here. And then I think we'll start to work in some of our light rose color. And we'll see if we need to add in some more blue around it. So I think it was Prussian blue that uh, he was using for this upper section. And we do still need to add some of it down in the bottom because he ended up doing some water I think at some point but um, we'll get there we're not gonna rush we're gonna take our time there's no need to rush Because we're going to be here for a while. I actually prepped my dinner last night for tonight so that we could take a little bit more time today. And um, I'm kind of glad I did that. So we could get going a little bit earlier. So the color I'm using right now is called Denim Blue. It's got a slight shade variation to it. it there's a little bit of, I don't know if it's really white. Maybe like a cream color, slightly speckled in there with it. Every time you pick up Prussian blue, you think this is Sparta and you put it back down. <laughs> I will say lately, um, I've been watching, I've been watching, um, I found out about these, these two through, um, a video from Observe where he, um, he analyzes people's body language versus what the words coming out of their mouth to, to see, you know, if they're being genuine or if they're subconsciously um, 
going against what's like if their expressions and stuff are going against what they're saying and uh, he did an analytical video on these two from BuzzFeed Unsolved Shane and Ryan and oh my god these two <laughs> these two are hilarious I swear They've got a whole bunch of stuff on YouTube. They've got some true crime unsolved. They've got some, uh, their, their quote unquote, our ghosts real series is just fantastic. I never laughed so hard ever. That was amazing. Because one of them believes in ghosts and the other one's quite a bit of a skeptic. And they just, they work so well together. It was just, it, it gave me stuff to watch while I was trying to turn all of the yarn into fluff. Late at night. As I was struggling to get stuff done and get caught up with things. Because I still have stuff to do for my WoW Challenges stream. That's a lot of prep. I think that that stream takes the most amount of prep for me. Um, just because I'm trying to get challengers to where they're going to level up. So that way, you know, we can get through a bunch in a sitting, and bam, we're done um, for, for that week. But uh, doing the prep for that, sorry, I hit the microphone with the sharp implement. Um, it takes a lot of time. Especially as the characters get, get higher, so... This week, I'm not sure if we're going to get to all six again. Last week, we only did five. Um, I've got two completely ready for, um, for Wednesday. I'm working on the monk right now. Well, not at this moment, but the monks in progress. Um, they're not even halfway through their level yet, though. We'll see. I'm hoping I can get some stuff done with them later tonight, if my internet behaves. I was hoping to be a little bit further along, but the one night when I popped on to somebody to work on them, um, I think it was my demon hunter. I was starting to lag a little bit and um, on the one fight I thought oh okay and then I kind of sat there for a minute and things seemed to be fine and I couldn't figure out where the problem was coming from I thought well maybe it was just a, a that moment issue so I started the next fight and no it wasn't a that moment issue because <laughs> then well that's a loud truck for this time of day. Um, sorry, we live right on a very, like the main road through town, so there's gonna be busy traffic noises. Um, so I started to fight and I thought I was gonna DC because nothing was going through, so I started to back up and then the spells caught up and went through and I'm like okay are we good so I tried to finish the fight and then it happened again and I'm like what is it what's going on and it started backing up and then the spells went through and at that point I was like uh, we need to, to not be fighting this right now so I just kind of turned and ran and I had plenty of health at the time and the the mob leashed and then I looked at my latency and it was triple digits through the roof out of nowhere and I was like okay I think we're done for right now 
So I was like, yeah, let's, let's pause there. And I'll go do something else, and then I'll come back to this later. So that cost me a couple of hours of uh, time on that, which I wasn't real happy about, but you know, what can you do? Ed, 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 don't do that. No, no. We don't, we don't do that, Ed. Hey, hey, kitty, leave me. No, 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 go. Go on, go, go. Sorry, Ed's trying to chew on one of the plastic bags I have stuff stored in. And I don't know what his obsession is with plastic bags, but the boy loves plastic. You can't play WoW right now. Yeah, I think I remember you. Um, I'm saying that. And there's a Japanese artist that you've been following lately on um, YouTube. Oh, nice. Yeah, like, I just, I really want to complete my, uh, my challenge goal of getting, um, all of the classes to max as a bloodthirsty, and plus being on the mod team and, um, helping Lita with the podcast, I kind of need something to talk about, so, <laughs> challenge-wise, so, um... I'm just kind of trying to hang in there to get my trying to get my goal done. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. Um, depends on what happens financially with uh, with what's going on. There might be a month or two that I may have to pause. Um that endeavor, <laughs> that project, we'll see. Alright, so this is light rose that I am starting to work in right now. has a toothache when animals chew on plastic it means they either have a toothache or something in their teeth is bothering them hmm interesting I'll have to tell the husband that because he's done that since he was little since he was a little tiny kitten And then he got the other ones to do it, so... What's up? Nothing. You're caught up. Oh, okay. So, um, somebody in my chat thinks that the cat chewing on plastic means that they have a toothache. Uh, if so, they've had a toothache the entire time we've owned them. Yeah, because he's done that since he was a kid. So I, th I think it's just them wanting grass. But, again, I can't keep the grass up because it's winter. Yeah, the cold killed it when we had it in the windowsill. Yeah, uh, come spring, I will probably set up a series of cat grass boxes so we can swap them out. Okay. What are you going to do, leave them on the porch? or? Yeah, I'll leave them on the porch, just bring one in at a time. Bring so, it in, leave it for a day, swap it out. I was going to say, if you bring it in, it's not going to... If you have them all in the house, it's not going to survive. <laughs> no, no, no. Because Peabut found where we were keeping them. Or where we were keeping the one, and he was just destroying it as fast as he could. Like, I was catching him finding where we had it. Climbing on places that he doesn't normally climb. But, uh, we will see what happens with that. But,
Ed's a strange one though. He's he's always been a bit of a strange one. He eats just fine. He, he doesn't seem to have a problem eating. In fact, he probably eats the most out of everybody. He tends to eat real fast. He could have been born with a bad tooth, and maybe. I mean, it's possible. We got him from the animal shelter. He's always been a bit of an odd one. Like, he was still trying to, um nurse on our fingers even though he was um, he was uh, weaned at least he's not as bitey as the other cat the other cat um, the other kitten that we rescued she she's just she's in a stage where well, when she, we first got her she was very bitey um, like playful bitey but now she likes to love bite or she just wants to chew on our our feet like I'll feel her walk up and smell my leg or smell my ankle and I'm like don't do it because I can tell when she's about to do it because she's walking up real slow I'm like don't you dare because she's a bit of a brat Or I'll be sitting here and uh, she'll be trying to bite my toes through my socks. The one day I was sitting here and she walked up, smelled the side of my leg. Animals don't bite you even playfully because you bite back. <laughs> and I was just sitting here and um, I felt her smelling the side of my leg and then all of a sudden she like sunk her teeth in. I'm like, stop that. She didn't actually hurt me or anything, but... I was like, there's other ways to say you want attention, my friend. <laughs> She's been mad at me this week, though, because I haven't been giving her um, late night cuddles on my desk because I had yarn everywhere and I was in a hurry trying to get stuff fluffed for, uh, for today and... We had somehow gotten into this thing where she, like, wants cuddles, but she doesn't want to admit she wants cuddles. It's weird. She won't jump on my desk, but she'll reach up and tap me and meow at me. And then she'll walk away from me when I go to pick her up. She doesn't like being held, but if I pick her up and kind of wrap my arms around her and lay her on my desk, then she'll stay. And then she kind of sits there for a minute and then she'll kind of tuck into my elbow and curl up and just chill. And I'm like, okay. I was like, you fought me tooth and nail, but this is what you wanted. Because I'll go out and I'll check her food bowl. She's got plenty of food. I'm like, my goodness, child. She's only recently really started doing that. I don't know if it's because the husband's been in the other room. But she's slowly latching on to me. Kind of reminded me of um, our other female cat that had died a couple months before we found the kitten. 
in a parking lot at like 10 o'clock at night um, where she would lay on my arm while I was trying to do stuff on the computer or I had this one particular bathrobe and she would um, suck on it like she was trying to, to nurse on it there'd be these wet spots all over it it get to the point where I really couldn't do anything there's times where she would try to do it while I'm reading and wow where she's like laying across my desk her head's on my my mouse hand and I'm like kitty I need my hand and she's just like mm, no this is my hand now But we had lost two of, when you talk about rats, your 215 pound three year old puppy is a prat. Um, I can imagine. We had a, um, we had a St. Bernard for a while that thought he was a lap dog who pinned me to our couch when we were in New Jersey several times where he decided he was gonna lay on me and uh, that was all there was to it. But uh, we had lost two cats um, that had their own little personality quirks pretty close together. And um, they were our two older cats. And then we were like, okay, well, we're going to dwindle our cat population. We're not going to get um, any more animals for a while. Because uh, we didn't know what life was going to be throwing at us next, and um, things were a little more, well, things are still pretty much the same in uncertainty, but we're like, no, we're not gonna. And then we went out for a walk one night, it had just rained earlier, so the ground was all wet, and we were walking past the car wash down the end of our street, and we're like, what is that noise? And we turned and we looked at the car wash and there was this tiny little ball of fluff frantically running around the um, car wash meowing in such a panicked tone that we were like, what the hell? And we didn't know where mom was. We realized it was a kitten. And we didn't know if we should try to catch it. It wouldn't come close enough to us so that we could just pick it up. It was always just out of arm's reach. And then Russell saw it try to eat a dead leaf and he's like, go back to the house and get some food. So I did, it wasn't kitten food, it was just regular adult food because that's all that we had. And uh, we were trying to make friends with it. And we were sitting there for like an hour, hour and a half, trying to get close enough to it. And then Russell decided you know, it's like, well, what if somebody lost a cat? And I was like, well, I don't know. I hadn't seen any messages on the one Facebook page for a town where somebody lost a cat. Um, I mean, uh, it might be possible. Um, and I'm like, we can't leave this kitten out here all night. So he went back to the house to try to get some gloves because we didn't know how feral this kitten was. Um, because we had a bad experience trying to free a feral kitten from somebody's car engine um, at the one job we were at one night and that kitten dug its nails into his hand and latched its teeth in and we're like, so we knew what could happen and we were trying to be careful about grabbing bra grabbing this kitten um, so he ran back to the house to grab his work gloves and in the meantime it had hopped into there's these brick planters that um, hold the, the trash cans at our car wash and um, just to kind of keep them from falling over and, and rolling everywhere so there's an open space that the trash can sits in and she jumped into that and I was like oh god so I'm like, Kitty, you're making this very difficult. And um, there was a wooden pallet that the trash can was sitting on top of and she went underneath of it 
and she was kind of hiding under there and I was periodically dropping food down in there and I could hear her eating it and she was purring I could hear her purring while she was eating and I'm like could, could you not come out please and um, Russell came back and we took the trash can out of the slot it was sitting in and then we realized that the wooden pallet we could pick up too. <clears throat> so as he went to pick up the wooden pallet, there was a slight gap that she could have ran into to hide from us further. And if she went in there, we weren't going to be able to get her at all. Um, so I kind of blocked that off with a piece of cardboard that was in there that we found and he managed to grab her. And as soon as he grabbed her and picked her up, she kind of melted into his arms and just started purring. And I'm like, really? See, this wasn't that bad. And uh, we walked her home. So we were only a couple doors down from our house. And all the time we were sitting there, nobody ever came out looking for her. I don't know how the neighbors didn't hear her meowing. It was so loud echoing off of the, uh, the brick stalls. But nobody pulled in. Nobody came looking for a kitten that got lost. And I'm like, okay, this is weird. And um, we got her home and she was filthy from uh, playing around the trash can. So we quick gave her, we gave her one bath. And we're like, I'm really surprised that she didn't have any fleas come off on her. And then as I'm trying to towel her dry and rubbing her, then I saw the fleas moving. I'm like, oh, wait, stop. <laughs> Russell goes, what? So we have to wash her again. He's like, what do you mean? I said, apparently the fleas were hiding the first time, so we need to redo this. Because I see them now. And uh, I really don't want to set off a flea infestation from this kitten. So we had to quick rewash her, and then we ended up having to get flea medication for everybody anyway. Because I think we had missed a couple. And uh, so I'm sitting there holding her, trying to tell her dry. And she just kind of curled up in my elbow and kind of went to sleep. And uh, I was scrolled through a couple of the Facebook pages that people use for town and the pound one that people post on when they're missing a cat. Never saw anything about kittens missing or a kitten, nothing. And I was like, well, I said to Russell, I said, what do you want to do? Because I don't see anybody mentioning that a kitten's missing, a kitten got out. Like, this might have been a feral kitten that didn't belong to anybody. Um, it kind of appeared right there. I was like we gonna keep it or what do you want to do and he's like mm. he's like I, I he's like we're gonna keep it i was like this kitten showed up at a very odd time and she kind of seems to be a combination of both of the older cats that we had recently lost as her personality was coming out and we were spending a little bit more time with her about a month later, as we were starting to set up her her vetting and getting her kitten shots and stuff, um, I had seen the local town um, pound page post that there were several kittens up for adoption that were ready. And I was like, damn, if they don't look like the kitten that we found. So I'm wondering if somebody had turned over a bunch of young kittens or found a bunch of young kittens and she was hiding and got missed. It's very possible. Because she's a, she's a bit of a sassy pants. So if she was hiding by that trash can, I could totally see that they had missed her.
Well, that's how we ended up with her. But uh, she hates my parents. She'll take treats from them, but if my mom tries to, to pet her and give her attention, she'll just start swiping at her. You want to see a picture of that when you're done with it. You gotta go make one. Okay, no problem. It's gonna be um, it's gonna be a while before we completely finish it. Like it might take a couple of stream sessions, but um, yeah, I'll probably be posting. Um, I'll be posting session update photos on Twitter and on Kofi and. Possibly Instagram, I don't know. We might save Instagram for when it's finished. Because I finally got that sorted. But yeah, I'll probably be doing session updates on, uh, on the Twitters, at the very least. And uh, you, sir, have a good afternoon. to get our pink worked in here. I mean, it's a good chunk of pink. I might work a little bit more blue around the edge. Just to kind of make it our own a little bit. Found a loose section there. Get that tapped in. Got a little bit more. You know what? Let's let's go a little bit of blue in there. Grab my scissors here. Okay. Tag me on Twitter when you do, if you don't mind. No, I will. No problem. You too. Thank you. Alright, so I think maybe we'll add just a little bit more blue in here. I know it's not exactly the same, but it doesn't have to be. Because what's one of the things that Bob always says? He says you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. He says I want you to be able to do this and kind of make it your own. the big guy here soon. I think. I think we might end up doing that. Okay, and I think I need a little bit more blue right in there. A little bit of our felt color kind of poking through. Alright, let's swap to big guy. Like the big guy feels maybe more for when you're doing the 
the little figurines and stuff. I mean, you can kind of use it for this, but I just feel like I'm missing so much of what I'm trying to tag. So it just, it actually feels more efficient to go with this one. Maybe if I had a smaller big one. Like maybe if it was four needles or six needles instead of eight, it might actually hit what I'm trying to hit. <laughs> but, uh, oh wait, we still had some, some fluff fluff here. Okay. So I'm just gonna tack my edge down first. You don't have to tack your edge down first, I just do that, just so I can have a better gauge of where I'm at. Space-wise. So there is a mountain that's going to be in this one, so this should be interesting. Be our first mountain attempt. Don't know if we're going to get to the mountain today. Today we might just be laying in the sky. Fluff enough. Some more fluffy floof. I feel like my camera angle is like way off. It feels like it's too high. It's at a very strange angle today. That's a little better. I mean, we're also working a little bit bigger than we usually do, so that's probably also lending to the weird angle feel of it today. change how I'm sitting. Probably time to stand up and get a stretch in. Always good to do that. That way you don't get all locked up and stuff. Oh. Helps if I don't roll over my pant leg as well. Where's there it is. I lost it. Usually stab it through the uh, the pad so I know where it's at. All right. So I did switch to a wax melter in electric wax melter um, because they make my incense in a wax melt form the one one of the few smells I can 
tolerate that doesn't trigger a migraine so that um, I didn't want to have <laughs> the hot um, smoking incense stick while even though it's partially contained um, in its burner I didn't want to run the risk of the fluff getting airborne because you'll have a strand every so often go flying by and uh, I didn't want it to hit the uh, the ember of the stick smoking away and then have all kinds of real problems so it's just afraid of a potential fire hazard there so it's like yeah let's switch to the electric burner And let's go with the wax melts. And I get a little bit more uh, runtime per per wax cube on those. I want to try a couple other scents, but um, I don't know if I'm gonna like them. And we don't have a um, we don't have a wild berry specific distributor um, where we're currently living. We did up north, um, like they had some other stuff, like they had Yankee candles and and uh, other stuff too, but um, they carried a lot. A lot a lot a lot of the wild berry stuff um, so that's where we used to buy it from but we don't like there's a couple of places that used to exist in the mall I don't know if they're still there that would sit like have a small setup of the wild berry incense sticks um, so you could at least kind of smell them before you bought them and I don't have to get specifically that incense I might see if we are out and about somewhere if someone else might have them or have something similar. We were actually going to try to make our own. Um, I've got some lime extract, some lime oil. We were thinking about getting some some uh, soy wax because we have a silicone silicone. Silicon um, mold that we're not using for anything else. Husband originally got it for candy, but we realized it's a little big for what he wants to make, so he ended up getting a smaller one, but it would be a good size for a wax melt. So we might try to make some lime scented ones. It's a good chunk of pink, and then it's a really good chunk of yellow. So I'm not sure if we need to do all of the pink before we put the yellow in. I don't know what the yellow is going to look like against this background. It might be alright. And I only have this like bright goldy yellow. I didn't get the other yellow that I wanted, so gonna be a bit 
bit bright in the yellow department. So the yellow kind of sits in the middle and then it kind of drifts down to the bottom as well. Yellow will probably come into play maybe about there. Is what I'm thinking. Oh, and that is why we have the finger protector. So the yellow, we're gonna kind of take most of the way across. Actually, I think it is gonna go all the way across here. So it actually looks a little more subdued um, down on the felt, which is good. That is that is good. If it starts to look a little too green, then we'll just have to um, thicken up that color a bit but I don't think we'll need to. Like in certain spots, we may need to. Alright, so I'm just kind of putting this guy in here. So I kind of have an idea of where I want. See, we're kind of missing a lot of it with this guy. Like, he works, but I feel like he works better when we've got a lot more color down. Because if there's not that much uh, fiber down, then we're just kind of stabbing the felt needlessly actually I feel like that one kind of makes more work for us in the end at least right now goodness did you guys hear about the the cruise ship um one of the smaller cruise ships that i think goes to to more destinations uh, or some different destinations that some of the bigger ships can't because of its size um it had just i don't know if it was in the middle of a cruise or if it had just started a cruise um it had left Miami and got diverted to Bimini because the United States issued an arrest warrant for the ship, which was odd. I don't know why they issued it for the ship. Um, due to unpaid fuel bills. Because apparently the parent company is now saying that they've run out of money. and are going out of business or something or, or some shit and I'm just like what so when they got to Bimini there's like a uh, I don't know if it's like a high speed ferry or like a shuttle service that um, can 
shepherd people back and forth from Bimini to, uh, to either Miami or Fort Lauderdale. And when they got to Bimini, they offloaded the passengers onto the shuttle thing, the shuttle ferry service, and um, took them back to Fort Lauderdale. And I'm like, what? And then I couldn't understand why they were going to Fort Lauderdale, because I thought the ship had left Miami. So I, I don't know what that was about. Maybe it had left Fort Lauderdale to begin with and I just didn't realize it. But uh, it was, it was, it, this story is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Like those have got to be some really pissed people. Like, what? I don't know if they're going to get their money back. I hope they do. I don't know what's going to happen there with that. I haven't heard all of the details of the story, so I don't know. But, <coughs> oh my goodness. Can you just imagine? got to be one of the craziest things. I had seen one of the cruise um, cruise news um, YouTube vloggers saying like one of their um, thumbnails had said cruise line runs out of money and I never had the chance to go back and read the uh, or or watch the video. I'm gonna have to now, because I think this is what they were talking about. This has gotta be so terrible. I just can't imagine that happening like what would you do you saved all this money to go on this trip and then the method that you're using to travel gets like starts the trip and then x number of hours into it it's like oh hey we have to stop here um in a couple of hours you all need to get the fuck off the boat because uh there ain't no money and we ain't going nowhere Like, what? That's some messed up shit. Okay, so it's not quite as subdued as when we first started tacking it down, but still, that's not bad. I mean, I've got some space in there, so there's a little bit of the green felt um, coming through. That's fine. And our denim actually looks kind of lilac-y, doesn't it? I wonder if we need to put that, uh, that other shade of blue in there after all. We'll see. move that over just a little bit. We don't need to be on the very edge there. And we can come over a little bit.
Okay. So I do still have some sections where I think I'm seeing a little bit of our teal felt. Looking through our our denim up there, so I might add a little bit more to that. Not a whole lot, maybe just a little bit. You can see where some of our fluff has come through the back, and that's fine. It's going to happen as you're weaving it in. So that's not something to be too concerned with. to touch it. It just, it feels so soft. Right, so let me grab some more of this. And we'll just snip off a little piece. And we'll tuck this guy in here. Your Sunday is finding you guys well. right along our pink edge here. We just need a little bit more of our bluish color here. Be afraid to go back and add in some places if you think it's a little thin. Okay, that's totally up. 
up to you. It's your thing. You do what you want to do. Grab some more pink fluff. All right, you don't have to turn it into a little sneaky guy. I just am. Hi, Zuzu. What's up, my buddy? What's up? Hi, Popper. Do you have to potty? Do you need to potty? Do you have to go pee-pee? Do you? Or do you just want attention? He's just kind of sitting here staring at me. I don't know what you want. Of times when I ask him if he has to potty he'll get up and start to head to the place where we put his leash on so I don't know what this is I'm not quite sure what Pepper wants from me at the moment Kinda early for afternoon cookie, buddy. You do realize that, right? I don't know if he thinks I have food. Or if He's just looking for attention. It could be anything with the Zuzus. It could be anything. have to do a potty break here in just a moment. Because while the husband's starting to do a little more stuff, um, I don't think it's a good idea for him to take the dog yet because he's not supposed to lift anything heavier than 10 pounds and I think doggo pulls with the force of more than 10 pounds sometimes so give me one second Zuzu we just finished tacking in the section. Where are you going, Pepper? Zuzu, do you have to go potty? All right. Pepper won't won't be dissuaded to wait. So, give me one minute, guys. Now's a good time to go get a snack. Hey, Zorts, I'll be right back. Puppy's demanding potty. I I know. I'm coming. I'm coming. Where is it? Where is it? That's what I want. I will be right back in just a couple of moments. 
Sorry, guys. But husband's not up to taking him out yet, so go ahead. Back up. You gotta let me up. I'll be right back, you guys. Okay, guys, give me one second to resettle here. One second. Let me go get the dog and Chrissy. 
I still think he just wanted the cookie because he didn't really pee. He wanted to uh, to dick around. Outside there. Like all of the squirrels were out and he just wanted to go and smell all of the squirrels and chase them and I'm like, buddy, this wasn't an afternoon exploration. Mom's in the middle of something. There's people waiting on us. Good boy. I don't know how you got up there, but good boy going past the kitty. I know that we don't like the kitty very much. We like the kitty only when the kitty is not trying to claw our face up. Sometimes Little's like, mm, I don't know about you, and then the claws come out. And, and then we get upset. He tries to play with Little, but Little's form of play and Zuzu's form of play are two totally different things. 100%. And then he gets whiny and upset when she tries to play her way. <laughs> that which does not compare to his way, so... That's always an adventure, especially when he starts running through the house. And he's got the zoobies. So how is everybody doing today? How are you doing, Zorts? If you're even still here, you might not be. Sorry I had to run for the dog. But Russell tried to... Russell uh, drove for the first time today, just down the street. And then apparently he was walking around in the grocery store with my mom. Just got done shoveling and clearing off the car. Now trying to motivate yourself to do the dishes. Oh, I know that one. I know that one. That is a hard one to do. Most definitely. At least for me. I can think of a bunch of other things I'd rather do than the dishes, but then there's a bunch of other things that I'd rather not do and would do dishes instead, so. <laughs> Depends on where it falls on the I don't fucking think so meter. As it was last night, I ended up making, um, my pizza dough early. I made it last night for today. Ooh, I just remembered I need to message the husband something real quick. Oh, give me one second. Bob. 
Hold on, Bob. We're not there yet. Let's let's get to there, Bob. I accidentally clicked clicked on the video and it started playing. We're not there yet, Bob. We're not there yet. We're still very much on our sky. And I knew it was gonna take a while. So I take it you got snow then. We have a tiny little patch of snow left from when was it? Wednesday's stupidness? Thursday's stupidness? It's actually above freezing today. That in of itself is a miracle. It seems like. So now we can kind of get the big guy in here. Although big guy still kind of feels like it misses a lot. I know a lot of people say, oh, it goes faster if you use the bigger one, but they're spaced out so much. I feel like we're missing more than we're hitting. And it feels like in the long run, the big guy is more work. I don't mind using it as a finish Um, go over everything and make sure that we're all attached type tool, but when I'm on a mission, it just, I don't really care for it. And go to the grocery store. Oh, you got a lot to do today. All of the chores. I did litter boxes yesterday, um, so I'm good for another day or two on those. The only thing I have to do today is to get the trash out in the kitchen, do dishes after dinner, and then get the all of the trash from the week um, out to the curb. I did laundry yesterday, and um, husband has his his check up doctor's appointment um, tomorrow from the surgery so he's got a couple of things he wants to ask them about some things that he's noticed that have been going on since said surgery, but we'll see how that goes. He still has to get a sleep study done, but he's waiting until um, he's fully done healing from the surgery to uh, set that up because the nurse was downright adamant and upset <laughs> that um, that he get this done so something must have happened during his surgery because she said he was barely even awake and she was in recovery saying you need to get a sleep study done you have sleep apnea so I'm not quite sure what happened <laughs> uh, something happened that must have scared them because he didn't know he had it So we'll see what happens with that. 
What door did your mom use to go outside? Your parents. Mm -hmm. She couldn't possibly go out the back door, huh? Well, I the way she slams the doors, I was like, oh no, tell me she didn't use that door. She could. She literally could not. Okay. It's that jam down there. Okay. Because Zuzu wanted to go on a hike around the yard, and I didn't have time for a hike around the yard. Mm-hmm. But... All of the squirrels are out, and he just wanted to go and chase and smell and explore everything. Did you know there's daffodils coming up? <laughs> uh, yeah, this is about the right time, I do believe. I'm like, it's been in the friggin' 20s, and the daffodils are trying to come up. Like, what? Mm -hmm. I did you get my message? Yeah, I just took it out. Okay. That's why, that's why I'm stopping here for a moment. Okay, I wasn't sure. I mean, were you eating with me or no? Or are you uh, having your soup? It's fine if you're not. I just need to know. I, I think I'm going to have my soup. Okay. Um. Could you pull one of those bags of dough out for me on your way back? Because I think it has to come up to room temperature. So it'll stretch better. Mm -hmm. oh, fruits. Yeah, so that's a lot to do, so it's how late's your grocery store open? I would say doing that later, but I actually hate the um Walmart's not open 24 hours anymore. It was so nice to do a late night grocery run. With hardly anybody in there. I feel like we've got some green poking through in that section. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. Kind of like up in here. And that might just be how it's gonna be. Um, eventually, um, I'll end up getting some felt that's just all neutral color. I didn't really think about it when I picked the felt out, but now that I know that the color can kinda poke through, I'll end up just picking up some, uh, some neutral where I can just get a couple yards of it. from uh, either Walmart or Joann's, I suppose. But this is what we got, so this is what we're working with. color in, well, this spot next, I guess. Because I kind of want to take the pink down a little bit further. Otherwise, that's a lot of yellow to uh, tag in there. Probably bring our pink down a little bit further. Mm 
So again, we probably won't get tremendously far each session, um, at least not while we're establishing our background. This is a little bit of a slower thing for me. I work a little bit slower with it, but I actually really like this. Um, particular way of arting, I guess you could say. So it doesn't really bother me that this takes a bit longer, but I can always try to put a speed video together for the whole finished project. For those that are just more interested in seeing the completed one. Although I don't know if speeding up the video is going to make people dizzy with my hand moving so so fast, so don't really know. Okay. But that's not looking half bad so far. looking pretty decent. So I, I don't know why the felt wasn't, but it felt a little bit, um, short on the sides. Uh, I didn't cut the felt, I was going to, but uh, I guess I am thought it was one size and it's kind of not. But um, you know, I'll see if I can get it to fit into an 8x10 frame. Don't know if it will. But uh, we'll, we'll figure that out when we get there. That'll be a matter for, for dealing with later. Once we get all wrapped up. I'm just glad most of the ice has gone outside because that was a pain. The snow can be annoying, but you know, I can deal with it, but the ice is another matter. Really don't want to face plant in that. I fall plenty on my own. I don't need ice help. And we don't really have any ice melt here because of the animals. Don't want to have them stepping in that and licking it off their feet. That's no good. And the pet safe ice melts were really, really expensive for us at least. Okay, so I see a little patch or two that we need to get a little bit more take into kind of where those two met up and that's more than fine A 
get that worked into there. What time do I need to make sure you're up by in the morning? Uh, we have to be there at ten thirty. Yeah, you so. have to have time to fill out your stuff. So yeah, like nine forty-five. That's not enough time we'll to fill out your paperwork. Now, look at it. Um, that's uh, this is not a bill. Um. Alright, there's your new cards and there's the stuff for them. Alright. I think you might have to call when you get there. I'm not sure. Or maybe there'll be a sign that says it if you do. No, that's just front desk. Okay. Okay. So let's see here. That's not bad. All right. So if we take this bluff, maybe we'll double that. And we'll kind of come across into here. So this section is a little thin, so we'll have to add a little bit more. And that's fine. We've got plenty. probably start to work in a little bit more of our yellow here. Oh, little cat. Little cat's decided to uh, make her presence known somewhere. I hear her. Meow. Oh, do you have her? Yeah. I think she's excited to see you. Yeah, I think so too. Either that or they're out of food. I kept giving you one. Um. Wait, here's one. That doesn't have a flamingo on yeah. top of it? Okay, thank you. Just make sure it works first. Okay. I don't know if it's still in a functioning status. I know there's ink in there, but I don't know if it dried up. It seems to be okay. So I think in this section we'll add a little bit of our yellow. And kind of fade that into our pink here. That wouldn't be a half bad idea. I wish we could figure out why that desk is doing that. The L on the 
the other desk is loose or something, so it makes this squeaky noise like a dog yipping. It's been steadily getting louder. Alright, so I think... Oh, it might be a little thick. Maybe we'll thin that down just a little bit. And so we'll start to get that guy kind of melted into there. So I'm hoping that we can at least get the sky sorted today. We're not making terrible progress today, so we might. We'll see, though. I mean, I'm not saying we're not making terrible progress, but then, you know, um, let's look at how much further we have to go. So, wishful thinking that we'll get this guy finished today. It might be a little ambitious. We'll see. This one is going to be a long haul series. It's going to take some time. So I would not be surprised or don't be surprised uh, if we don't make a whole lot of progress um, very quickly. I may try to do some extra streams on this one where I can, but that depends on a bunch of other stuff. We could try to squeak in a couple extra Saturday streams where we're working on it here and there that might be doable um, there's going to be one Saturday a month that the podcast is taking off where I won't have any obligations for that so I can always um, do an extra art stream on that on uh, those days so you know we might try to do a little something something there that could be possible or it could just be extra doing something with the husband time. It always depends on how he's feeling for that stuff. I know we still have that RimWorld game going. It's going to be a little bit before we get back to that. And I don't know if the husband's going to be participating in a second D&D &D game. There was talk of the second group starting back up again, but they're not going to have a set day to play on. And the dude running it was going to kind of do a drop-in, drop-out game setup. Um... For those that could make it um, sporadically so I, I don't know what's gonna happen with that
if anything. I don't know if anybody's gonna show up to play at all if there's not a set schedule, so... At least for that particular group. What did you call it? A West Marches game or something? Uh -huh. That's why I told you you were going to need more time than... Because this is incredibly stupid of two shit. I know. I read over it and I was like, oh boy. It kind of gave me feels of the shit that I was filling out at the dentist, to be perfectly honest. Morel, what's up? I don't see you, so you must be with Dad. Mm -hmm. Is Cal still loose? No, cow is hooked. Cow is captured. Mama is loose. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it just goes on and on and on. How about a fucking paper clip or something, assholes? Was it not even stapled? No. Um. You have to fill out the same shit over and over again. I can give you a binder clip if you can get me a uh, a clothespin to replace it. No, it, it's not that. It's that I have to do the same thing over and over again because these fuckers have shit for paperwork. <laughs> it's probably so they don't have to fucking triple co photocopy everything. Alright. Did I finish tacking that section? I think I did. Okay. So let's get this one kind of tacked into there. And I'm, I'm okay with going over the yellow a little bit. Kind of make it just kind of feel like it's a little more blended in. With his guy, it feels a little stripey. So I'm going to try to remove that. When did I have my last thing? Last Friday? Huh? What? When did I have this stupid surgery? Last Friday, was it? No. Um, it was... What it, day of the week? It was... On the 12th, I believe. Yeah, like the morning of the 12th. It's like, you guys did it. You should fucking know when you did it. It's like, you're asking me when, when you did this? You don't know? Alright. So I feel like our little yellow finger there will just help us blend in a little bit better. And uh, just kind of break up the large block of uh, 
yellow that this is going to end up being. I probably should have brought the blue down a little bit further. But uh, that's neither here nor there at this point. Um, I mean, I guess we could, but... How about we'll go back and add a little bit more blue and bring the blue down further if the pink starts look to be starts looking to be a little too much pink. We can always do that. We have that option. In the meantime, we'll at least start to establish how far down we want this to be. On the one side here, at the very least. that in there because we're going to be slowly getting into more of our I guess golden glow here pretty soon here there's like definitely a good chunk of yellow in here there's also a good chunk of pink but the blue didn't look like there was that much blue so I think we will add a little bit more Pink in this one spot. So I'm just kind of like sneaking and pulling at the same time just to stretch this out just a little bit. I feel like we need a little bit more pink filler in here. And we might need just a little bit more pink worked into that spot. At least like right up on the bottom edge of that yellow that we just put in. Okay, 
just a little. Kind of fix that seam where the two colors kind of came together. Okay, that's pretty good there. And grab a little bit more. Down in uh, this section here. Make sure that I don't get too far off my edge that I just keep my edge established. So I don't want it like coming like halfway down. So halfway diagonal across there. Kind of why I put my my pen line in there just so I know approximately how wide I'm looking for this to be. So our felt, our felt size is a little bit bigger than our pad, so I definitely have to keep sliding over here. But that's okay. Not a huge deal. Alright. So my colors aren't going to be the exact same because, you know, paint blends and flows differently and the way that Bob does stuff, he kind of blends it on the canvas. And since this isn't really a medium that would blend like paint does. Like, I could probably twist a few colors together and get a slight variation, but they wouldn't really melt into each other. They would just kind of become a variegated shade, basically. So, we're just going to have to work with what we've got, and that is fine. There is nothing wrong with that. So I think I'm going to take our pink down a little bit further on the edge. All done? I'm as done as I can be. You know how that goes. Yeah, there was a bunch of stuff on that dental thing where I'm like, uh, I don't know. Alright, I'm going to put this right, by, right in front of my keyboard. Okay, don't forget to put your new card in your wallet. I don't know where your wallet is, so... So are you driving by yourself or is she taking no, she's you? Driving. Okay. After after taking your mom out, I think she should drive for this. Was it that bad? Um I definitely ended up stressing my system. Uh-huh. Nothing horrendous, but it, it did have an uh, appreciable effect, so Well, yeah, I mean you're moving muscles that are trying to Yeah, so just to be safe. 
And you've got your list for tomorrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Getting this color all kind of tacked into there. I'm kind of surprised Tyler has the time to set up this West March game. Uh, he's not doing any prep until shit actually gets organized. Like, this is, he's not going, the whole point is to not have it do that kind of prep. So this is a pre-made, or...? No, he's just, he's gonna ask them what they want to do, and then he's gonna prep that. Okay. Let's say, because they've got him on full-time now, so... I was gonna say, I'm surprised he's got the, uh... the time to work on both games. sitting with my the way I sit sometimes I um my knees like half twisted so it gets a little fussy so we have to change position every so often We'll be starting the Great Yellow Thon. Okay, so that's a lot of that is not tacked down yet. Another reason why I like to touch it, because if it moves, then I know I didn't do a good job uh, tacking that section. So, um, I think maybe we'll bring a little bit of yellow into that side there. Maybe into there. We're probably going to start to establish our yard, our, our yard, our yard, our large yellow section. Coming in here. And this is one of our bigger pieces that we've done. At least, you know, not like, I mean, we did do a couple 11 by 14 things uh, canvas wise, but usually restricted to working a bit smaller just because of workspace and a lot of the times when I was doing the smaller things it was also to try to get a project completed in one go but I know that this isn't going to be completed in one go just because of um, how much time is involved with it I know this already so I'm not 
that um, fussed with making sure that we complete a certain amount of stuff each week. We're just going to go until we have to stop that day. Um, make sure for those that are popping in and out, if you want to keep up to date on the progress of this, to follow me on Twitter or my Kofi page, either one. Um, I'll most likely be posting updates there. The I still have to add the Instagram page to the down below. Um, the finished piece will get posted um, everywhere plus Instagram, but I think I might save Instagram for the finished stuff. But I will try to post the in-progress photos both to um, Twitter and Kofi. I don't really have um, my own Discord set up because we really don't have that big of a community at the moment, so it didn't seem uh, worth setting up yet. If the community gets a little bit bigger, we can do that. I'm not opposed to doing it, it just. I mean, I kind of have one set up already sort of, but I just don't have it public, it's private. not too bad so far. I think we're doing pretty good. Let's start to uh, get this sorted out. I'm just, I'm just a afraid of going too hard on the yellow too too high you know because that's a lot of yellow but I think this might be a good height for us To bring the yellow all the way across fully by itself. Um, there is going to be um, a mountain in here somewhere because I did watch. I did watch this. Um, this tutorial a couple of times. I don't remember all of it, but I do remember some parts of it. So I remember enough to know that there is a big ass mountain in it. It kind of sits kind of in the middle. I think we'll put in a little more pink here. Get that worked in. Okay, the dishes are done. Good job, sir. Congratulations.
I do say I hate doing the dishes and then realizing that I need to make a dish because I need a snack or something and then I'm like, ah. A little bit of me dies every time. I'm like, I just finished them. Husband was able to help with a few dishes today though, so that was good. Thank you. I did the dishes. Well, I mean, you did the early dishes. We, we're, there's still more dishes coming because there's still people there's making always dinner. There's dishes coming. There's dishes coming tomorrow, too. <laughs> the obligatory men can do dishes joke. <laughs> the obligatory, excuse me. <laughs> Actually, Russell usually does the laundry because it's a lot of bending and twisting for my angry and back. Yeah, Zuzu pulls really hard sometimes. Momo's not too bad when Momo was going out. Um, he has not yet decided that he feels like going out. Once in a while he does, but he has his potty pad, so... He's starting to get up and move around a bit more in the house. He's now going and checking out breakfast with everyone. He's now investigating when anybody's in the kitchen, so the boy's getting up and moving a little bit, so I'm hoping that when the weather starts to warm up, he'll want to start to go outside again. But if he doesn't, that's fine. He might mentally be blocked about how he got hurt when the leash was on him, and as long as he goes on his potty pad, you know what? That's fine. I'm not going to traumatize the boy any further than he already has been. But he's been showing a lot of progress getting up and uh, checking out people eating. He was running through the dining room and into the hallway the other day. There's like no walk with him. It's either still or it's boom gone and I'm like buddy you're scaring me <laughs> it's like don't hurt yourself please he still won't get on the bed um but he did hurt himself getting on the bed the one day so I can see why that might uh take some time to uh to come around there But uh, I'm getting more happy tales, which is a good thing, because for a while he didn't even really want to wag his tail, so. But we're trying to reward him getting up whenever he does get up with food of some description. So we have some uh, we have some leftover scraps that we keep in the freezer for the doggos to use as uh, rewards. No, Russell usually helps me with the laundry. He'll help with dishes sometimes. Though the dishes hit his gross factor sometimes, so it's hard for him to... to help with those. But with this amount of people in the house, the dishes never stop here. All the time dishes. All the time dishes. But at least he's starting to be able to do a couple things. Though he needs to do them at his pace and not let other people dictate his pace. So 
so. Because I th I'm pretty sure that that paperwork said three weeks on most of the restrictions. But there was a couple of interesting things that have cropped up that he's going to talk to them about. Well, most of them have gone away, so I'm pretty fucking sure. I would still double check on that burning sensation, though. On your stomach. Oh, yeah. And just double check how much, like, what to expect as you go forward here. Like, is the burning going to keep happening as you're healing? And all that stuff. Alright. I don't know how long term that's gonna be. to figure out um I don't think your mom has to be here for your sleep study no cause you're just there's no drugs involved yeah you're that. just going there to sleep while they have a bunch of doodads stuck onto you if they're even doing them right now I don't know they may not be with all of the things and stuff I mean they might but they might just clean really well. But that's something that we've got to get sorted. And then we have to reschedule my, my surgery for my mouth. Because unfortunately that got postponed. It was actually kind of funny. Because a couple days before um, Russell ended up having his emergency surgery, they had called and they said, oh, we had some cancellations. Do you want to move this up to this day or this day? And I was kind of hesitant. I mean, I really wanted to get it done. But I also still wasn't completely... Um, like, I know the more time to think about it is gonna be bad for me, but at the same time, I was like, my mind has already decided that this is the day it's happening. I don't know if I want to throw myself for a loop and do it sooner. So I was like, no, let's leave it on that day. And then like two days later, he had emergency surgery on one of the days they wanted to move it to. So, and I had to end up calling and canceling mine because he wasn't gonna be able to uh, take me for that and I did not really want my mother-in-law taking me for that and the both of us can't be fucked up at the same time so <laughs> you're looking you gotta grab a shower and double check your grocery list okay no problem yeah both of us cannot be fucked up at the same time that that would be very bad um, nothing would end up getting done how the two of us need things to be dealt with and at least for a couple of days so I don't know how how out of commission I'm going to be I probably won't be able to talk very well or I'm probably not going to want to talk for a couple of days depends on what they do or how they do it I guess I could be fine, I don't know, I've never had this done before. So like with my root canals, I could always talk afterwards. I really wasn't in any pain after the Novocaine wore off. It was, it was fine, I was fine. Um, but this is a whole nother animal, so I don't know what to expect. I've heard a lot of people tell me, oh, that's, it's, it's terrible, you're gonna hate it, it hurts so much, and I'm like, oh, thanks guys, I really needed to know that, thank you. 
and I don't know if they were fucking with me or if they meant it. So I'm like, hmm, right, I'm a big ass baby when it comes to going to the dentist and uh, I don't know if I really needed to hear that, but thanks. Because I, they're, they're not people that, um, the, the, the ones that were saying that are ones that can sometimes uh, joke and over-exaggerate stuff. So I, I don't know how sincere they were. Or if they legit meant it. So... But it worked out that I ended up canceling it because I realized that it was going to coincide with the date of something else and I really didn't want to deal with both things at the same time, so... So that's, that's fine. We still don't know how we're gonna fucking pay for it anyway, so. On a wing and a prayer. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna take like four months before, at least before it would even be able to be completed. So. At least, you know, we, I don't think we have to pay for the whole thing up front. I mean, it would be silly to pay for the whole thing up front. Okay. All right. So we're 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 getting there slowly, but we are getting there. Kind of feel like we might need a little more pink over in here. It is getting stiffer when I go to to pull it up, so. We're definitely getting a good amount of of our yarn tapped in here. And honestly, it doesn't feel any different from the other stuff. Like it as it's um, working wise, it doesn't feel any different. Um, I actually kind of like this a little bit more. It's not it's not quite as frizzy. As the the other stuff was that I had and that might just depend on the quality of the roving but I'm actually liking this stuff better the uh, the acrylic yarn better for this prep was a pain in the ass I'm not gonna lie but at the same time, totally worth it for the amount of money I saved. So, while it did have its drawbacks, it, it was worth it in the long run. So if you've got time to kill, um, to set up the your acrylic yarn, then yeah, totally, totally do it. One hundred percent. Compared to the price of the roving and the amount of colors I was going to need, oh, 
I don't even know if I could have gotten all of the roving in the colors that I was looking for um, based off of the couple of searches I did. Um, if I had been able to, um, some of the roving amounts for um, for a multitude of colors were boxes of it and they were like ten dollars a box and I ended up grabbing 21 colors of yarn so and I actually probably could have really used 23 colors that's a lot of money so I was like oh shit Oh no, the, the yarn worked out much better. Much. All right. And I'm just saying it was a pain on the prep just because I had a bunch of other stuff I was trying to do at the same time. That's all. But all in all, it wasn't so bad. And I didn't um, fluff every single... Like, I didn't fluff the entirety of all of the yarn. I've got it stored in a couple kitty litter buckets that we had just sitting around just to keep the cats out of it mostly um, so I only did like a ziploc bags worth of fluff per color to get me started and I was like all right well you know let's see how far this goes and then we can make more fluff as we go but it was just a lot easier to have the fluff ready than to sit here and try to fluff it as we use it because it, it took me a couple of hours each color depending on what I was trying to do while fluffing so and um how interrupted I was, so. But it definitely went faster when I picked up the metal sticker brush. Because I had started out using um, a plastic cheap ass um, pet brush that we had had just to get started until I could get to the store to get the better one and that one I was starting to to break the teeth on because you know it was only plastic but the metal one was tough it was fine got through the colors a lot faster my thumb got a little ripped up but that was just how I was holding the yarn. So that was more of a, a me problem than anything. Alright, so I'm gonna work in a little more pink in that section. They're yelling. Yeah, your dad just yelled at the TV. Oh lord. That was my dad? Uh-huh. It's not like it came from outside. 
Uh, there must be football on. So I'm anticipating your mom to start yelling any minute. If they're watching the same game. I'm sure he just woke- well no, she's probably up. Because I heard somebody come out and turn the oven on, so... gonna add a little bit more of our pink color in here just where it looks a little thin I might add a little bit more yellow in there. Alright. I mean, we still have a good ways to go on the sky. And I might work on the sky a little bit off stream if I have time. Maybe, or we might do an extra art stream at some point this week. We'll see. Um, that's going to depend on how I'm feeling and how I am for time for everything else. We'll see. House chores take time. <laughs> They take time to get through. At least for this distracted muffin. Stuff that probably takes somebody else like 15 minutes to do. It'll take me like an hour to get through. And I'm like, why is this taking so long? But also... Let's go do this, this, and this. At the same time. Okay, so I think we'll start busting out some more more of this yellowy color. They called it varsity gold and I can see how it would be be that color. It is kind of like that weird Kind of obnoxious -y color for me at least it does kind of remind you of like lettering on like school mascot signs and stuff it's not too bad when you get it in against the other colors though it, it mellows out a little bit compared to the amount that's in the uh, package so I mean this is what we look like against itself and then against the other colors it's not quite so so much it tones down a bit phone has not rung in like two days. It always scares me when it rings because it doesn't ring that often. to our yellow color here. Like he really went went ham with the yellow on this one. I 
I was actually kind of surprised. So if I had to pick a color that this one was closest to out of his paint set, I would say this is probably closer to maybe Indian yellow, um, but like I said, they were out of what I would consider to be like a, a cad yellow color. And I didn't know when it was coming back in stock, so I was like, you know what, fuck it. Uh, we'll just, we'll make do with this color, that's fine. Oh, there we go. That one stuck right through there. He didn't want to let go. So, you just kind of snake that just a little bit. So this is going to dip into below our horizon line. It's going to dip into the water a little bit. Kind of surprised. He does put water in it. He doesn't usually put that much yellow. Um, when he's gonna do water. But right now I'm not gonna worry about the water. I'm just gonna go down to our horizon line for now. We can worry about the water when we get there and we're definitely not getting there today okay so we're definitely gonna have to add some more of this color on top of itself gonna go in a little bit thin. Let's see, can I use you? Are you gonna be helpful to me whatsoever? Oh, a little bit. Since we've got a little more fluff to work with here. the other one better. I keep trying to give that one a chance, but... I don't know. That one feels like it's much more of a workout. This one feels like it actually anchors it in a little bit better. Like I can actually see it pull the loose ends in and, uh, and anchor it to the pad or to the felt there. So you can see, see where we've uh, been working there. It's poking through. That's fine. It's going to happen. Don't panic about that. It's supposed to do that. That is more than fine. Okay, so 
also have a couple spots in here. I mean, we're going to be putting more over it, so I guess it doesn't matter if it's a little bit loose in that section. So, let's see here. As we work on this stuff, get this side all good and filled in so we don't have any thin spots. have a couple more spots where I can kind of see through. In this section here. Kind of lay that in there. And we have to get some more a little more pink, I think. Maybe just a little bit further in. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe we'll keep on going with our yellow here just a little bit further. Maybe it was one of the kids calling and they hung up. Alright. Pretty happy with how far we have gotten today. gonna go for a little bit more probably about another hour can you get that stuff my dough oh right you want me to pull it out to get yeah I'm sorry uh, I, I wasn't sure if you were staying no, longer I or I was gonna be heading back to the video okay thank you yep. So I'm okay with a little bit of the feathering coming off the edge there. That actually kind of works to our advantage. Kind of blends it in a little bit better. It'll either help it blend in or it will melt in. Either way. Either way, it will work for us. I 
and what we're trying to do. Okay. So, I mean, it looks a little bit better once you get, like, the green out of there. So, I think we're... We're doing pretty good on that front. You okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. You gonna lay back down or? Yeah, I'm gonna make something eat real quick. Yeah, I'm gonna lay back. Okay. Alright. Get a little bit more of our goldy floof here. So, probably have to do a bit of layering up on this color just to make sure that we've got all of our gaps sufficiently. Covered on this one. Hope everybody's doing okay today. I'm just glad I don't have to have the space heater running. I did have to drip the faucets unexpectedly last night. It had gotten a little bit warmer yesterday, and as I was getting ready for bed, I was like, it's kind of chilly in here, and um, I went and I checked the temperature, and it was like, it was below freezing, 24 or something, it was unexpected, and I was like, oh, shit, we're catching faucet. <laughs> I mean, it might have been okay if I hadn't dripped it, but at the same time, since all of the pipes run under the house in the crawl space, I was like, is it really worth risking? So I was like, uh, I'd rather have to pay or deal with a slightly higher water bill then have to deal with an exuberant plumbing bill. So. I was like, let's just strip the faucet. And save ourselves some potential heartache here, so. I mean, at least our hot water heaters inside a lot of the houses here like the newer constructions for some reason um they've got the hot water heater in the garage and i guess that's a little bit safer um for po potential um carbon monoxide wise um if it's like a gas hot water heater i suppose or maybe just worked better that way. Um, ours is in the house, so we don't have to worry about that freezing, but whenever it starts to um, 
get below freezing the city's posting on Facebook about what to do to keep your pipes from freezing reminders that if your hot water heater is in the garage to make sure your garage door is closed tight and uh, if your garage still gets that fucking cold you may want to put a space heater out there safely and how to thaw a potentially frozen pipe safely because oh my goodness the one cold snap we had was it last year so many people were like oh my god my pipes are frozen I don't have water and the city's like well did you do this this or this are you sure your meter's frozen? Because uh, it's probably interior. There were so many calls to the city about my meter's frozen, my meter's frozen. I'm like, really? Our meter's not frozen. It takes a lot to freeze the water meters. Like, are you sure? I think out of well, like 20, 30 some calls they had, like only one water meter was actually frozen at the at the street. And these were like new construction houses that people were having meltdowns over. I'm like, well, just because it's new doesn't mean it's not gonna freeze, you guys. Like, what the heck? Like, have you never owned a house before? In the winter. Where it gets cold. Like, uh, these things happen. I guess people weren't expecting it to get that cold. It it, it did get cold. Um, I think we were in the negatives when that happened. It doesn't normally hit negatives here. Like once every couple years. They threatened it to happen the other night and I don't think it ever did. I think it just got to like three or two. I don't think it actually dipped below negative. But still, that was fucking cold for our house. Well, our room. The rest of the house was fine. Our bedroom was freezing. But I also refuse to run a space heater at night when I go to bed, so. unless the space heater is right next to me and I will know if there is a problem. I don't want it running when I'm sleeping. Our cats are dicks, so I have reasons. I don't want them knocking anything over that's across the room that I might sleep through. Because the past couple of mornings, they have been on some tears running through our bedroom at like 7 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, kitty, no, it's sleepy time. No, no. It's not run through the house and screech at the top of our lungs time. But 
then they'll start chasing each other and I have a footstool at the end of the bed um, like kind of like a small ottoman that wasn't being used anywhere else um, so that the dogs could get up and off the bed without falling since Momo fell trying to get on the bed because the bed's a little bit higher and they're small dogs and so after that happened um, we brought the footstool in and Zuzu's finally figured out to use it although half the time he just jumps from the floor anyway especially if there's a cat sitting on it but I also put um, a cup of water and um, a cup of food for Momo so because he wasn't really getting up to go very far and when he did um, he was really wobbly because he was on the, the muscle relaxers and stuff and so I've just kind of left it sitting there so he doesn't have to go far and uh, the cats mm, Peabody in particular will get on the footstool and just start ripping his claws into it as hard as he can and then he like enters this crazed mental state where he's hanging to the side of it and then he just kind of like freaks out and leaps off the edge of it he has spilled that cup of water so many times and several times it spilled onto Momo while he was sleeping and Momo woke up and he's like what the fuck and then I'm like what the fuck <laughs> And then I yell at Peabody, and then he goes flying out of the bedroom, and I'm just like, really? And then I go out in the kitchen and realize that they were out of food, and nobody else could be bothered to check on their food. I'm like, this is why you're being a dick? This is why? And I get a mouth. Like, thanks. Thanks, sir. But the times that I go out there and there is food and he's still being a dick, well, there's just no excuse for that. That's just straight up Mr. Peabut being Mr. Peabut. sounds like velcro when I pull it off almost all right so let's see here where's our pink So we need to get a little bit more of our pink color in here, I think. Like we need a little bit more in here. Just looks a little bit thin. See how that looks after we get this section uh, tapped in here. Oh, so for any of my wild challenges, people, just a heads up, we still are having trouble with the server that the um, MP3 gets uploaded to. Uh, we have both mp3s from last week and yesterday's show but we can't upload them because the server's being a butthead <laughs> so um it will be youtube video 
that will be released tonight um, to start off with and once we are able to get the mp3 uploaded to where it's supposed to live we will do that and next weekend is elders festival you guys so i need to dust off my iron I don't even remember what level she is. She's 54? But at this point I'm like, no, I'm not taking her into Shadowlands. That's fine. She can stay sub 60 forever. Or... Or... We'll just do holidays. Probably gonna be like another year's worth of holidays, depending on how much XP they give us, but at least at the rate that I level. So it looked like I had a small small hole right there. Not quite sure what that's about. Probably just the way it was laying there. Alright, yeah, that should be. I don't know. End up evening out there. Alright. Get some more floof. Alright. Alright, floof. Where are we gonna put ya? So maybe. We'll take you across in here, here. It's a little thin right in there. Just trying to um, deal with any thin spots as we go. How's it looking for being able to add pacifist to the list? Um, not yet. Uh, we've got Zaya now working on... Um, digging through the code. Um, Zaya's learning as he goes. We think... He seems to think that he might have found a couple of the current bugs. Um, so now they just need to... Um, see if that's it and he's talking with nap back and forth so they, they are actively working on it I can tell you that they are working on it because um, Zaya has been been telling us what he's been looking at and when he finds something that could be potentially um, an issue to fix so we're just kind of seeing how he goes and he's fine because he plays the challenges and Nap doesn't. So Zaya kind of knows more of what's an issue for us. So he's digging through all of the monstrous amount of code that it is. You wouldn't think that it would be that much code, but it is just a shit ton of code, you guys. Um, I know the code that I have to look at to update the podcast page and to embed the YouTube videos in the blog post and um, the, even that is like to put the little tiny you, uh, YouTube video embedded into the blog posts that's almost three pages of code on its own um, so 
But no, I do know they are actively working on it. Zaya has been giving us some updates. Um, I, I don't know how long it's going to be, but I do know they are working on it. Or at least he is finding stuff to um, give to, to Nap to narrow down to look at. And then they have to to get in there and see what changing that will affect and, and test it and stuff. But I do know that there is active, active looking into going on, active digging, um, as, as they get time to, but Zaya has been updating us on what he's been up to. So that's, that's something that's further than we were before. So, um, so I'm, I'm viewing it as a, a step forward into getting shit sorted. Um, sorry about the no mp3 again this week. Um, we do have it. It will be uploaded as soon as we figure out what the fuck pissed off the, the file server. <laughs> we don't know. Um, Lita doesn't know, but she's, she's talking to the tech people with the, the file server and our people in she said it was fine when I uploaded the last mp3 in December, and now I go to upload mp3 for the first show of this year, and something happened between the, the like, when was the last show? Like, December 8th or 16th or something, and January 15th, something happened in the course of a month, and we don't know what. Don't know. <sighs> But, but we're trying to get that figured out too. We are. We haven't just thrown our hands up in the air and walked away yet. Um, we're, we're still trying to figure this shit out, but. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. That's understandable. Like there's a couple people that were already on the list that have dinged um, that our tracker did pick up. Um, but they were already on the list. But even though they're already on the list, we don't know if those are verified. Like, they're not technically verified runs because of the gear issue. So, we're saying congrats, but we can't do your write-up until we know if... Uh, I can't do the write-ups until I know the, the runs are, are clean, shall we say. Um, but yeah, there were so many changes on Blizzard's end, I think our code flipped the fuck out. Because our code's like looking for specific things, you know, um, specific uh, gear implementations and, and Blizzard's just changed how they're tracking things in quotation marks so much with the new API that they did. Um, our system kind of got angry and so they had to work around that too. It's been a very challenging expansion um, to deal with. Annoyingly so. It's like, what do you mean now? <laughs> like, I thought we fixed this. Oh, if you guys are frustrated, just think of how frustrated we are. <laughs> it's just... I'm just like, uh-huh, okay, sure. But like, yeah, I've got like a, a whole list of people that need write-ups done once we're able to verify. I'm gonna be busy. I think I've got 10, 15 write-ups I have to do. once um once we get everything figured out some people's info i have some people's info i guess they forgot to give it to me or um they're just waiting to see if they even need to bother giving it to me i think the one person forgot they kept saying they were going to give it to me and then every time they thought about it they were about to go to bed <laughs> So I'm like, well, I guess there's really not that big of a rush since I can't really do the write-up right now anyway, but that's fine. 
but uh, I have to do, um, so Elder's Festival starts next Sunday. Um, next week's art stream might start a little bit later, or it might start on time, um, <laughs> on time. I did start early today, um, because I need to see if they changed anything. I doubt they did, but I don't know. I don't know ahead of time, and I usually check Wowhead's update before I update our stuff, um, and see what they're saying that they found is new or if anything new was added. What is this, Elder Festival? Um, I don't think they're gonna add anything new. They could potentially, I mean, I've already had one Elder Festival, right? With Shadowlands, so. The only thing I could see them doing is adding maybe three more Elders, maybe four in Shadowlands. Um, and I don't know if they're gonna do that. It might just be an Ember Court thing that they add. I can't remember what they added last year, if anything. If they added anything last year, it was something for Ember Court. Because they're the only ones that they seem to do anything with. Uh, they did do something Thanksgiving shapeshifting wise where they added in um, Ardenweald. But um, it's usually just Ember Court. And it's usually like level 60 stuff or stuff that doesn't really matter to a challenger but um yeah so art stream next week may start at a slightly different time uh we'll still have it unless i have a migraine in which case i will post on twitter so make sure you're following there uh, whenever i have to cancel i will let you guys know on the twitter account But I am still planning on doing the art stream next week. Just might be a little delayed while I get Elders dealt with. I try to get it updated as soon as I can. Um, lately though, <laughs> Wowhead's been a little slow updating their holiday articles. Um, I don't know if they lost a holiday writer or what, but there was a couple of holidays in there where they didn't even update their own holiday guide till like two to three days into the holiday. And I was like, oh, that's weird. Um, one of the holidays they did recently, well, quote unquote recently, I don't know if it was Wintervale or if it was Pilgrims. You know what? I think it might have been Pilgrims. Um, the first... They, they did an update article... Well, they did an article, shall we say, about, um, I think, the shapeshifty things. And then I think they did something about Ember Court. And that was it. And I'm like... Uh... What? And it was, it was very odd. It might have been like several days before they incorporated it into the rest of the guide, if they did it all. It was just very bizarre how it got updated. And I was like, um, why wasn't this just added as a new for this year under the main article instead of it being its entirely own article. It was, it was strange. It was very strange. You got nothing special for next week on the calendar. Dark Moon Fair. Elders is supposed to start on the 29th for, um, for January. It was there as of two days ago. It's on a Sunday. Thought it was. 
I've been looking for it because then it bleeds into um, into love is in the air they they overlap each other looking for next weekend yeah I'm I have Sunday for me is is part of like is the last day of of a week Monday is always the first day in my brain so I know some people view Sunday as the first day of the week sorry about that confusion <laughs> I always forget about that but um but yeah so I don't know we'll see hopefully it gets updated in a semi timely manner um for a while they had somebody updating it as soon as it went live in EU because it goes live in EU or or um, or in Asia before it did in the US so somebody was posting stuff oh it's live here and these are the changes that we've seen here so I was kind of gauging well, it was going to be U.S. for stuff that was changed to see if there was anything I really needed to worry about. But uh, that stopped, and I don't know why. I don't know if that person doesn't write for them anymore or what, but it's like, oh, okay. Okay, the 30th. Okay, yeah, I, I get my days wrong. I wasn't sure if it was the 29th or 30th. I uh, scared the shit out of myself yesterday because um, I wasn't feeling that well. I think I was fighting a headache and I knew I was on the podcast. So I was like, you know what, let me just go to bed early. I was so tired. Um, I was like eye burning tired. So I went to bed at like 2, 2.30. I laid there um, trying to settle down and play a word search game on my Kindle for a little bit until I just was about to, to pass out. So I put my Kindle down and I checked the time. I think it was almost four, which is still early for me to go to sleep lately. So I was like, all right. I was like, four o'clock. All right, that's fine. I should be up between 1 and 2.30, so I don't need to set an alarm. I'm good. We're, we're good. <laughs> I fell asleep, and I woke up. And it seemed kind of dark in our bedroom, as it usually does, because we have blankets instead of curtains, because the curtains don't block out enough light and at the time when we hung the blankets, I was still working overnights, so I needed to sleep during the day to block out the sun. And I'm laying there, and I wasn't sure why I woke up. And I'm like, my god, what time is it? And because I, I felt like I had been asleep for a while, even though I was tired as shit. And I'm like, what time is it? Okay, so yeah, it was probably Asia then. Um, it was one of one of them. Some place where it started before us, Asia, Oceanic. One of one of the future land areas. Um, and I'm laying there. I'm like, what time is it? Why is it so dark? And the house was like really, really quiet. And that kind of set me off because I'm like is it supposed to be this quiet? And usually when I wake up the sun's up or one of the animals woke me up doing something stupid but it was pretty still like I just like jolted awake and I was really weirded out and I grabbed my kindle and I'm like what time is it? Well, my Kindle home screen, like when I hit my, when I tap my power button before I unlock it, 
There's no AM or PM on the time. And I didn't realize this until yesterday. And it said 6.30. And I was like, and I'm sitting there looking at it. And this time of year, it's dark at 6.30 a.m. Still a little bit. The sun's not fully up. Or the sun has gone down and it's dark at 6.30 p.m. For me, in my time zone, the show starts at 6 p.m. Central. So when I'm sitting there looking at the time, I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm like, is it a.m. or p.m.? And then I started to panic. I'm like, is it 6.30 a.m. or 6.30 p.m.? And, <laughs> and I had YouTube already loaded because I had been looking at a webcam before I went to bed. I was watching uh, one of the train cams that I kind of watch. I was watching it snow in the background. And um, I'm frantically trying to load up the webcam. I'm like, what time is it? What time is it? What time is it? And I couldn't remember if that webcam was in my time zone or not. And I loaded up the webcam and it's like 6.31. And I'm like, AM or PM! And, and I couldn't remember. I was like, it's actually yelling at my Kindle. I could not remember if the webcam um, showed the time in military or not. Because I'm like, well, if this is military time, then it's AM. Because PM's a whole different set of numbers. And um, like, PM was like 18 something for, for 6.30, I think. Maybe, I think. I don't know. It's been a while since I've had to look at military time. Um, and I was just like having a full on meltdown. And then I was like, Google, Google will tell me. So I was like, Google, what time is it? And it's like 6.30 a.m. And I'm like, oh, thank fucking God. I was so disoriented. I thought I missed the start of the show. And I'm like, why didn't anybody wake me up? How the hell did I sleep all day? And I'm like, why am I so fucking tired if I slept all day? I'd been asleep two hours. It, it was, oh, I was just having a conniption fit and I was like, oh my god, Russell's like, but it tells you on your taskbar if it's AM or PM. I was like, Russell, I wasn't at my computer. I was still laying in bed. <laughs> and my Kindle didn't say it. I don't know why it didn't say it, but it didn't say it. And I was getting so mad. I probably could have just hit the clock function and gone into the app and actually looked there. It might have said it. But it wasn't saying it on the main screen, and I'm like, Th this isn't helping me. Oh, it was terrible. And then I had to, then I was like all jittery and shit from the uh, adrenaline rush, and I'm just sitting there. I'm like, oh my god, it's okay, it's okay, calm down, you're okay, you didn't miss anything. It's still like way early. So then I ended up setting an alarm, and uh, then of course I had to pee, so... That's probably why I originally woke up, was that I had to pee. And, uh, I tried to go back to sleep, and, like, then I was panic waking myself up, even though I had an alarm set. I was, like, waking myself up, like, every half an hour, 45 minutes. I'm like, oh my god, what time is it? So, oh, it's kind of like a, um, uh, Oh, it's just like, just a tablet, not really like a Chromebook, but, um, it's like an iPad, put it that way. Um, except you can't do as much on it. It, it, it can't do all the things that an iPad can do, but it's similar to like maybe a mini iPad where, I mean, like you can watch YouTube on it, you can read books on it, it's their um amazon's book program is called kindle where you can like rent stuff from their library for free or if you have amazon prime you can get some books for free and stuff but it's it's basically kind of like an ipad kind of but it doesn't do as much as the ipads do there's some like game apps and stuff you can get on there and they keep adding more and more shit to try to compete with ipad and there's a lot more apps on there that they seem to keep adding to the software that weren't there when I got it. And I'm like, where did this come from? 
I'm like, I don't want this on here. And I actually tried to remove it and it wouldn't let me. <laughs> and I'm like, well, shit, if I had known they were going to put all these extra apps on here that I didn't want as time went on, I would have gotten the Kindle with the larger memory bank on it. Because all these apps are eating my memory bank. Yeah, so it's it's similar. It was it was a much cheaper version. Um, it was nowhere near the expense of an iPad. I think it was on sale for like fifty one Christmas. It's a couple years old. Um, the one I have. My I had an original um, Kindle, which was just basically their electronic book reader, that eventually died. Um, there was uh, black and white. It was before they did their their paper white one, and then they introduced Kindle Fire, um, which you can, which has like a Wi-Fi, a better Wi-Fi signal on it. You can actually do more things with it, but it was like fifty bucks at the time I bought it on sale. It was a Christmas present. I almost asked for that to re be replaced this Christmas, but instead I was like, no, I want the art supplies more. Because my screen's cracked in one of the sections on it, one of the corners. I think it fell off the bed and the dog stepped on it. I was like, oh, that's helpful. Because I never ended up getting armor for it. It didn't fit in my old case that I had had. And this one gets a lot hotter temperature wise than my other one ever did. So I'm like, um, maybe I don't want it in the case. But uh, all right. we're, we're doing pretty good here. I do kind of wish I'd put a little bit more of our purpley blue color in there, but there's not that much in it. Just kind of dappled in there up at the top. But yeah, we're, we're moving along here. Like I said, this project's going to be um, a lot longer. We're not going to finish one episode in a day, that's for sure. Especially because I'm working so much bigger than um, the last one that we worked on. So it's going to take a little bit of time. But I'll, I'll be posting update photos on on Twitter and, um, and on Kofi. Kofi, coffee, how, I think it's supposed to be pronounced coffee, but not 100% certain of that. But yeah, I mean, I think we've done fairly, fairly decent job of it so far today. <laughs> the the more layers I'm putting in, the crunchier it's getting. But that's all right. It's a soft, it's a snow crunch. It's not a screech. So I'm okay with, with the snow crunchy noises. That doesn't bother me. It's the, the screech on the foam that was going to be way too much for my ears to, uh, to handle. Alright, so I'm hoping to get the monk wrapped up. I don't know when I'm going to get the monk wrapped up. I was thinking tonight, but, or at least get the monk ready for, for, um, sorry, it sounded like one of the dogs was at my feet. Um, I'm hoping to at least get the monk ready for Wednesday. I, um, we're going to end up missing one of the bloods again this week. Um, we're only going to do five this week. We'll probably skip the druid. Um, 
I just, I haven't had as much time this week as I would like. Um, since husband hasn't been able to help much with house chores yet. So I'm still kind of doing the bulk of everything, which took a lot of time this week somehow. But, um... The monk is sitting at, I think, 35% through level 54, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. So, I don't know if I'm going to get her finished tonight or get her to where she needs to be. That That's a lot. Um... An hour, I get about three bars of XP on her, if I'm focused. So, at the moment, I mean, I might be able to do it. Depends on how much time I get to put into it tonight. So, I'm hoping that if we get the monk done, the shaman shouldn't take too long to get ready. Um, with the level that she's sitting at. I was hoping to get the Shaman and the Warrior in there. I mean, we still have Monday and Tuesday, but it really depends on how long the Monk takes. But we'll, we'll see. I, there's not enough time to, to do the Druid too. I know that much. Um, I'm not gonna stress myself out that hard. We did the druid last week and skipped the DK. This week we'll... I've, I've got the DK ready um, and we'll skip the druid this week. That, that's all. We'll make up the time difference there. That kind of works out. And then hopefully the week after I'll be able to get everybody worked in. I don't know how you do it all, DC, but I hope you don't hear of me saying. Oh, well, I don't know how I do it either. I was, uh, I was going off on some people this week in this house. I was like, just stop. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> oh my god. People in this house must hate me right now, but they, my mom also is like, well, I wish I could help you. And I'm like, you know what will help me? Because she's not allowed to do the dishes because we've, we've discussed that before. She can't see that well. And so I end up having to rewash half the dishes anyway. So it's just less aggravation for me to just do them myself. Um, so I'm like, you know what would help me? If you don't make extra dishes that's what will help me the most and she kind of rolled her eyes at me and I'm like no no you don't understand we don't need six pans to make this we can do it in three we don't need to do extra extra dish dirtying we don't need to go through six spoons to to do this or that you know I'm like we, we can do it in this many I'm like this is what I mean by don't make extra dishes I was like I understand you all have to eat but let's not make extra dishes, okay? Because that's more time it takes for me to do stuff. I don't sleep is how, is how I, I get the shit done. I don't sleep. Um, and she goes, okay. And I was like, all right. Well, I, I, I'm like, why do you guys even ask me what you can do to help me if when I tell you what you can do to help me, you flat out ignore like, why ask me? Because then I just get mad. So, out of nowhere this week, my mom decides, oh, I want to make pasta salad. And I'm like, really? You need to make pasta salad this week. Really? Are you sure? Because 
it's a pot for the pasta it's the strainer it it's the, it's the cutting board to top all of the things up and then it's you know this and then it's the extra knives and the extra spoons and then all of the extra bowls because we don't eat the pasta salad with our dinner we have to have it in a separate bowl to eat it because it can't touch the other food and i understand that that's a trigger for some people and they can't handle that but i was we actually had gotten them separated plates with all the little compartments, but then the plates were being weird when we washed them, so we had to get rid of them. They, they were like constantly greasy. We have to find better ones. And, um, because they were plastic, maybe we can find some ceramic ones somewhere. But I was like, oh my god. And I was like, okay. Well, then today, Russell came in and he scared the shit out of me because I wasn't expecting him to come in the bedroom because he's been sleeping in the other room because he can't sleep in our bed yet. And, um, because of his stomach. And I heard a noise. It scared the crap out of me. I actually thought, like, one of the cats had gotten hurt or something. And I bolted up. I'm like, what the fuck? And he goes, oh, it was me. Sorry, sorry. He's like, I was zipping up my sweatshirt. I'm like, where are you going? He's like, I'm going to try to drive your mom down the street to the grocery store. I was like, are you sure that's a good idea? Because you haven't driven yet. And he's like, yeah, I think I'm going to try it. He goes, I don't have to go far. It's right here. I was like, okay. I was like, please be careful. And don't overdo it. And I couldn't figure out why the fuck she needed to go to the grocery store. She, she just went to the grocery store. I don't know. I think you hit a certain age and you just always want to be at the grocery store. I, I, I don't understand this. She's got so much stuff to choose from in the freezer and stuff. So they came back and while they were, well, actually while they were gone, I had to get up and go to the bathroom. And when I walked out into the kitchen, there was a pot of water sitting on the stove, like a big pot of water. And I was sitting there looking at it. I'm like, that's weird. Why is there a pot of water on the stove? It wasn't on. It was just sitting there. And I'm like, huh. What the fuck's this about? Because, you know, I am I am territorial over the kitchen since I have to fucking clean it. So if somebody's out there making a mess, I want to know what the fuck they're doing. So, <laughs> so that I can try to mitigate the mess, I guess. Um and try to lay out some ground rules of what are we doing we're gonna put everything in the sink when we're done right so i'm not going crazy about walking into the kitchen destroyed right um so i'm like looking at this big ass pot of water and i'm like that's that's weird okay and then i saw some like chicken sitting out that was stalling for dinner tonight i'm like is she making chicken and dumplings like i was very confused so I kind of let it go, and I just couldn't figure out why you would need that much water for chicken and dumplings either. My, I was half asleep. My brain wasn't functioning, and I was just like, okay. So I went to pee, and I'm like, it's too early for this for me. I had not been, I had not gotten enough sleep, so I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, I went to pee. I went to lay back down, and holy mother of fuck. Every door in this house started slamming, and the- Buddy. Hi. Sorry, dog wants attention now. Um, and it's very jarring in our room, because we're like diagonal from- our bedroom's kind of diagonal in the house from where the, the mother-in-law's bedroom is. And the way the ceilings are, or at least the way the ceiling is in here, you hear every slam. and. I'm laying there trying to sleep. Like, sometimes when she slams the door, the whole house will shudder. And I'm like, oh my god. And our bed is up against one of the outer walls. Trying to fall back asleep. And the cats kept tearing through here. Then... I started hearing every door imaginable bang. I heard the bathroom door bang. I heard the dryer door bang. And that one scared me because it, it was it slammed so hard. I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, why did the dryer door bang? There's nothing in the dryer. And I'm like, I cleaned the dryer lint trap yesterday. Nothing was left in the dryer. Why is the dryer door slamming? Because I hadn't heard the washer run at all. There, In my mind, there was no reason for that dryer door to have been touched. And I'm trying to fall back asleep. 
and then bedroom door banged. Not three seconds later, the bedroom door banged again. And and I'm like, oh my god. Then the bathroom door banged again for some fucking reason. And then I heard something bang out in the kitchen. I'm like, motherfucker. So at that point, I'm like, yeah, this ain't happening. So I had to get up. And I walk out into the kitchen. I'm half asleep. I'm pissed. They came back. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then I saw my mom making pasta salad. And I'm like, oh, again? Really? With the pasta salad? And she didn't see me. Her back was to me. So I'm like, eh, eh. So I just kind of made this noise of, no. And uh, I was like, just, just walk away. Just walk away. So I, I walked away. And I came in here. So I'm already riled up because I didn't get to sleep as much as I really wanted to. And I'm sitting here trying to set up for a stream. I was trying to message Russell. He wasn't getting the messages on his phone. For some reason, his phone disconnects from Discord a lot. He finally comes in. He's like, so you're caught up on the dishes. He goes, I did get some of those done for you. I'm like, well, thank you. And then he goes, your mom. And I was like, what? He goes, she's a fucking piece of work. He goes, I had to lay into her. And I was like, what? He said, so I was helping her cut the stuff for the pasta salad. And I'm like, uh-huh. And so she had him cutting pimentos or something. And he cut the whole jar. And he asked her, he's like, what do you want me to do with these? And she's like, oh, um, just put them in a cup. So he did. And... He put them in the cup and he hands her the cup and she immediately dumps it into the, bo the the bowl of pasta salad. And he just stood there and looked at her and he's like, why? He goes, this is what Dee is talking about with the extra dishes. And she just kind of looked at him blankly, he said, and it didn't register. He's like, I didn't need to dirty the cup if you had told me that it was just getting dumped in there now. And I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, I can't, can't with this, can't. So, it, it's been a rough day already. But, um, yeah, yesterday I had to do, he got some of the morning dishes done. Because, uh, see, I, since I have to do the dishes, and we don't have a lot of money right now. I can't afford to have three hot cooked meals a day. That that doesn't happen. Two hot meals a day doesn't even happen. It's usually a snack and dinner and then a couple more snacks after dinner. Um, that's kind of what the pattern that we've got into because, you know, cash is tight. Well, my mom cooks their breakfast for her and my dad and every morning she has to make bacon and she cooks it in the microwave and then it's not just bacon I found out it's also bacon and sausage well my dad wants sausage she wants bacon and and so then we have that and then they have cereal or they'll have eggs with it and then that's more pots and pans and I'm like oh my god and and the mother-in-law's here right now so that means that she's cooking something different for breakfast and she's usually frying up an egg or an omelet so that's another set of of cooking things and eating things and I'm just like I'm like Russell I'm gonna hurt somebody <laughs> Not, not literally, but I'm, I'm not happy. I was like, people need to stop making me dishes. <laughs> I was so mad. I was so mad. Um, it's, it's just, it's been a lot with him. Um, like I know other people do it on their own and you know, that's cool and all. Um, but I usually have helped to some degree and dealing with the trash and the litter boxes and the laundry and the dishes that don't want to fucking end and getting the recycling out and getting the trash out to the curb and 
And then making sure that the husband, seeing if he needs to be fed or if he's good trying to figure out his own food and then feeding me and, <laughs> and then trying to get stuff ready for stream. It's been a lot this past two weeks. I, I gotta tell you, I, I'm tired. I really am tired. Um, it's rougher when the mother-in-law is here because she gets under my skin something terrible. Um, so it's been especially rough. Like my, my own parents get under my skin, but, uh, she does especially. So it's, it's been, it's been a thing <laughs> where I, I've been extra yelly this week and I keep telling Russell, I'm like, I'm sorry, I apologize, but, um, my patients don't exist any longer right now. Um, so... Uh, I'm gonna be a little pissy and I'm I'm sorry, but it feels like everybody is giving me extra work to do on top of the extra stuff I'm already doing that I don't normally. Cause uh like my my back's not the greatest. It's kind of fucked up in, in a couple spots. So um I kinda have to be careful how much I lift and how much like what ways I move because I've got an issue down by my tailbone where um, stuff is sliding in and out of place at times and that's not fun. And um, my scoliosis in my upper back's not fun at times either. So I have to be careful of what I'm doing, how I'm moving. Like I have to plan sometimes how I'm going to step and stuff. So um, it's... Uh, it pisses me off to no end when people know that uh, one of the people in the house that does a lot of the stuff can't do the stuff. And uh, they don't tailor accordingly. And I'm like, I'm not asking for you to stop doing the things entirely. Just, you know, let's give me, give me uh, like a, a week or two of just slow down let's not go crazy let's not make the huge messes please pretty please because <laughs> um yeah i had to do the grocery shopping on my well sort of on my own um because we were out of everything right when the husband had to have his emergency surgery because um we like buy a month's worth of groceries at a time and we will supplement in if we run out of something as we go. But like we have a plan of what we're gonna do for meals for the month or try to stick to. And then, cause we'll go to Sam's and there's some bulk stuff that we'll get there. If not, then we'll go to, to Walmart because of our budget. And, and then we kind of try to stick to that budget. But um, Russell's lately has, he's been going on his own. Um, if he has to be out down towards that end of town, um, up in, uh, Fayetteville, cause it's a bit of a drive from our house. Um, we're about, mm, half hour-ish away from there, so if he's down there so he doesn't waste the gas, he'll just go. Um, but I was making plans to go with him and we were working on a grocery list and stuff. And then he went to the ER and I'm like, oh shit. And then they said, oh, it's his appendix. He has to stay. And he's messaging me, telling me shit. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. And I'm just like, okay, well, husband has a problem. But on top of that, fuck. So I'm like, <laughs> like shit. So um, we had enough stuff to get through a couple more days. And well... Um, then the mother-in-law drove me to the grocery store because we only had Russell's car because uh, she got dropped off from her sister that kept her car and went back to Oklahoma so that she could drive Russell's car back because he wasn't going to be able to drive. So, so she drove me to go grocery shopping and I had to go to Sam's and Walmart both and uh, that was a very stressful situation. I don't 
I don't handle her well under good circumstances. So already being stressed out of my mind and having to deal with her was not an ideal situation. So like I always joke that I have a house full of toddlers. Um, I don't, but Russell was basically reduced to the capacity of a five-year-old because he wasn't allowed to do anything. Um, like he could ask for stuff that he wanted that I could go get him, but he wasn't like he could, they wanted him to get up and walk around a little bit, but he was in no condition to really function. Um, so his ass was just mostly get up to go to the bathroom and then lay back down is basically all that he could really handle, which, you know, fair. He had, you know, a fucking organ removed. And so, you know, that's fair. But <laughs> then when I factor in my parents and then the mother-in-law on top of it, I was just like, oh my god. I am suddenly a single parent with a house full of three and four year olds and the oldest is five, um, is what it felt like because she decided to do something stupid when we were at the grocery store and I was not having it. Um, I was <laughs> not having it. Cause, okay, so backstory. Russell handles paying all of our, our bills. He, he has that all set up on his computer. He knows the passwords for everything and all that. Uh, cause he doesn't want me to have to, to worry about it. Um, so he knew what shit still had to get paid out of the money that we had gotten from my parents for the month. I had a strict list I had to follow. Uh, I couldn't really deviate from it much, budget-wise, because I knew there were still bills that had to get paid that had not been paid yet. I knew that much. I just didn't know how much we had to pay on them yet. So I'm like, okay, so we need to get this, this, and this, and I'm following the list. And the mother-in-law's on a pretty strict budget herself or she's supposed to be so and I also had my mom's uh list I was like doing two sets of shopping at once in in Sam's so I'm trying to get the stuff on my mom's list I'm trying to get the stuff on our list and then Sam's had water restrictions posted where you could only get three cases of water and I'm like fuck and in the hassle of getting out the door I forgot to grab Russell's Sam's card so I had to use the the mother-in-laws it's all on the same account so I was like well shit I don't know if it's this is three per order or if this is three per day like I wasn't sure and then I just I didn't I didn't want to deal with it I was I was so mad I was like you know what fuck it I don't even know if I've got room in the car to get my mom's water order so I'll 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 just get ours and then if there's room in the car after we get to Walmart then I'll, I'll just get hers at Walmart. That's fine. So I had this set up and then the mother-in-law, as I'm trying to figure this out in my head, decides to start grabbing water and throwing it on the car. I'm like, what are you doing? She goes, I'm helping. I'm just like, what do you mean you're helping? She goes, uh, I'm going to help out. I'm going to get this. And I'm like, it says three waters per, per thingy. And she's like, man, and I'm like, it says three waters per thing. I'm not getting up there and then having them throw a shit fit and saying we can't get the other water. Don't touch it. I said, you're getting water that's not even on the list. I was like, are you paying for that water? And she's like, eh, yeah, I guess I can. And I'm like, I was like, stop. Just stop. Just stop. I was like, I'm not getting the extra water anyway today. I'm not getting my mom's water today. We can come back another day. I don't know if I even have enough enough room in the car yet it's it's a four-door toyota like they only hold so much so um and at that point paper towels and toilet paper were more important than getting the extra cases of water that i didn't know if we had room for so i'm like trying not to start screaming at her <laughs> in the middle of the store I, I'm, I was really trying and i'm like stop i'm already anxious you're pushing me over the edge we're not getting that today. I'm not. I changed my mind. We'll deal with this later. I might get it at Walmart. She wouldn't listen to me until I said, I don't know if there's enough room in the car. Stop. 
like I was getting like really like angry and so she's like okay okay so then I had to lift up all the water that she had thrown on the cart and put it back the extra stuff and I was like oh my god get me the fuck out of here let, just just let me get the fucking shit I need because it was busy in there too and I didn't understand why because it wasn't a day where I figured it would be busy so I was just like just let me get the fuck out of here I, uh, I just want to go home so I, I got the shit that we needed in there and we were she's like oh we need paper plates and I stopped and I looked at her I said no we don't she goes yes we do I said we don't need paper plates there's there's no budget for paper plates I'm the one that's doing the dishes and I'm telling you we don't need paper plates that's an unnecessary expense right now that's how tight things are we we can't get paper plates she's like well I'm getting them and I was like, you can't eat paper plates. You're on a tight budget too. She's like, well, I'll eat them. And I was like, she she kind of threw up like a, a three or four year old temper tantrum argument. And I was like, I actually stopped and I took a deep breath and I was like, oh. and I was just like, we're, we're going to do this, huh? We're, we're going to do this in the middle of Sam's, huh? All right. So I was like, fuck it. She wants to be an indignant child. Let her be an indignant child. She got the paper plates. Because I said, you're paying for them. And she's like, yeah. I was like, all right. Just threw them in the cart. We're, I'm, I'm getting organized. I'm looking at what's on the cart where as we're, we're heading up to check out. And she started to go to one of the regular checkouts. I was like, no, no, we have to self check because I need to put stuff on certain orders. And it's just easier for me. It's less stressful for me to do this through checkout, self-check. Cause that way I know everything's going to the right, to the right payment method, basically. She's like, and she kind of paused and she's like, all right. And I said, here, take your paper plates. And well, as we were walking up, she's like, I'm just gonna put the, the paper plates on, on your order. She's like, I'll get you the money on the way home. She did this similar to my mom last month over something and I stopped dead in my tracks and I turned around because I had no idea how much I had spent in my mind I've always spent like 20 times more than I actually did and I'm like already half panicked because I have to be out with her and I'm like oh no that was the final straw <laughs> and I was like oh no she didn't and I know a lot of people are like, it's fucking paper plates. Who gives a shit? These were from Sam's. They were a bulk pack. It was like 150, 300 paper plates that A, we did not need. And B, I was not going to pay for because they were probably $15, $20. And I'm like, I uh, know. And, and I stopped and I turned around and I stopped her. I was like, no, we can't do that. And she's like, I can get you the money on the way home. Not a big deal. And I was like, mm, no, I don't know how much money... I've spent today and we still have to go to one more grocery store and we still have some bills outstanding that haven't been paid yet and I don't know how much the minimum payment is on those Russell does Russell knows kind of where the budget is sitting right now so since I don't have that information no we can't put this on our bill sorry that's not happening then she's like, well, I'll just put it on your mom's then. I was like, no, that's not happening either. I was like, I was given very strict instructions from my mother to only get what was on her list and not to get anything else because she has a very tight budget this month as well. She had a lot of uh, doctor's bills and stuff come in, so we're not doing that. I said, if you want the paper plates, you're going to have to get them. And to be perfectly honest, if you're just going to stop and get the money on the way home and give it to me, then you can just put them on your debit card because it's the same fucking thing and it's going to eliminate a trip on the way home. So what the hell is the point in giving me the money later if you can just put it on your debit card now? Like, that's dumb. Just, just, just put it on your debit card now. And she's like, I can just give it. I said, no. I said, look, I said, we're not leaving until you either put them back or you pay for them yourself because that's how this is going to end today like I felt like I was fucking arguing with a young child and and I'm like 
we really have to do this today. Today of all days, we, we really have to do this. And I, I was just like, I, I was like, she's gonna fucking make me cry in Sam's. Yes, the paper plate saga continues. I was like, woman? She been, she uh, broke down and paid for him because, uh, and, and I said to her, she's like, well, she's like, okay, fine, I'll, I'll buy them. And I was like, I better not get an overdraft in the mail for this. She's like, no, you won't. I was like, are you sure? Because I got two for the end of December. She's like, oh, well, that was a mistake. And I'm like, uh-huh. Sure it was. But, uh, she's, she's been, she's something else to deal with, you guys. I, I don't know what it is with her. Her and I do not get along. But I, I, I said, Russell, I said, we, we came home and Russell's like, he saw the look on, me, on my face and he's like, oh no. I was like, because <laughs> his mom's got a bum shoulder. Okay. She had to go to physical therapy and it, it just, it wasn't getting better. She had to do a cortisone shot and stuff. Um, there were... There were two cases, or two containers of cat litter. I think they were like 40 pounds each. There was one, two, three, four, five. There was six various sizes of cases of water that I had to bring in. The two 40 pound containers of cat litter, um, plus all the other bullshit that I had to get of various weights and sizes and stuff while we were out. And she kept trying to pick up the heavy shit and I'm like stop trying to pick up the heavy shit I said you don't need to be picking up the heavy shit I said you've got a bad shoulder and she's like I can pick it up I said you have a bad shoulder and we need you to be able to function and drive the car and do the things that Russell can't do and the things that I can't do I was like, you need to be able to function. Stop upsetting me. Stop stressing me out unnecessarily. And just let me do the thing. I will feel so much better if you just let me do the thing. I am capable of doing this much. If I didn't think I could, I would say something. I just don't normally do it because Russell doesn't let me. But... Just let me do the thing and stop upsetting me <laughs> and just get the fuck out of the way basically like go go somewhere just just go in the house please um russell was well enough to hold open the door for me which is all i wanted was just just somebody to open the door open the door and get the fuck out of the way <laughs> so i'm not tripping over you trying to carry in the all of the heavy shit. That, that, that's all I wanted. I wasn't asking for for a million dollars. That, that's all I wanted. And she kept trying to pick up the stuff. And I'm like, please stop. Russell started fucking yelling at her at that point. And because I, I just, I, I needed a minute alone. <laughs> I, I just, I needed to not have her in my personal bubble for at least half an hour. I had to calm down. Because if I didn't get a chance to decompress at all, it was going to get even more ugly. So I'm just like, the rage is building and I can feel it and I'm going to go off on somebody and it's not going to be pretty. It's, it's just, it's just not. But I had hit my wall and I'm like, you really need to go away. Thank you for taking me to the store. I appreciate it. But you need to go away now. I'm begging you to go away. And then she went in our room and was sitting on the bed petting the dogs. I'm like, you, you don't have to keep the dogs away from the door. They, they know not to go near the door. They're not, Momo's certainly not going to go anywhere. Um, I was like, it's, it's fine. And then she still kept trying to pick up shit. Russell, like, was yelling at her to, 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 to go somewhere. And I finally got all of the shit pulled in. And I just looked at him and he's like, go sit down for a minute. And I'm like, no, because if I sit down, I'm done. I'm not getting back up and the shit needs to get put away. And then the mother-in-law was like putting our stuff away. And I'm like, stop, you don't, I'm like, please stop. I'm 
like, I know where stuff has to go. Like, some stuff is getting frozen right now. Some stuff is not getting frozen. I, I, I need to know where the things are going. And I'm just like, please, please, I'm begging you. Russell finally got her to go somewhere. <laughs> and I'm just like, I looked at him and I was like, I was like, it's okay. It's gonna be okay. And I'm like, no, no, it's not. It's not. It's not gonna be okay. <laughs> it's like, Russell? He goes, I know. I know. He goes, you both came back, so that was good. <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ. It was pretty bad, though. I don't, I don't know what it is, but she just gets under my skin something terrible. I can't explain it. Like, the second Russell took my mom to the, the store this morning and drove her down there to see, to gauge if he could do it, because it was only, like, two minutes down the street. Um, as soon as he was out of the house, like, all of the doors started banging. And I finally couldn't take it anymore, and I went out in the kitchen, and she's still standing there. She's like, hi. And I'm like, what's with all the banging? And she's like, what banging? And I'm like what I'm like I didn't imagine this I'm like all of the doors slamming for the past 20 minutes what has been with all the doors slamming for the past 20 minutes while I've been trying to sleep and she goes oh I didn't know you were trying to sleep I thought you were up I'm like In all the time that she's been here, and in all the time that I've been here, I'm never up at 9.30 in the morning if I don't have to be. It is never by choice. And I just looked at her, and I'm like, I'm not normally up until 2.00. And she's like, okay, I'll remember. And I'm just like... Russell came back and I'm like, Russell! <laughs> and he's like, oh lord, now what? He came in and he goes, uh-oh, what's wrong? Because I was sitting in my desk chair, I had my feet up on the edge of the bed, and I was just sitting here because I was nursing a headache at that point. And I was just like... He's like, what's wrong? I was like, nothing. He's like, something has to be wrong because you look pissed. I'm like, oh, do I? <laughs> do I look pissed? How pissed am I? I just, I was like, Russell? He goes, yeah. I said, you know it is possible to close your mom's bedroom door without the door slamming and jarring the whole house, right? I was like, you know that's possible. I've done it. I do it all the time. He goes, yeah, I know. He goes, I think this, there's not much I can do about it. I said, I know. No, it's not. It's just frustrating when I'm already fucking tired from doing all the other shit lately. But there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Because he was able to do a little bit of dishes this morning. So he's slowly... He's slowly getting there. I think he still has another week of restrictions. He thought it was two. I thought it was three. I thought the paperwork said three weeks. Or it was two weeks of X and another week of Y. Something like that. But I'm just like... Like, husband? It's gonna be a problem. But she's here through February, through the end of February, because she has doctor's appointments that she was originally supposed to come back for. But the sister that she's been traveling with, the, the New Hampshire sister that she's been gallivanting all over, dropped 
um, dropped her off at the hospital so that she could get Russell's car and uh, bring him home since they weren't keeping him overnight. After dropping her off at the hospital, we thought she went back to Oklahoma. And apparently the two sis two of the sisters were talking back and forth, the New Hampshire sister and and the mother-in-law. And the New Hampshire sister was supposed to go back to New Hampshire on the 21st, which is why she kept or part of the reason why she was keeping Diane's car, uh, the mother-in-law, um, because she had to close on a property that she had sold. While they were talking, apparently the New Hampshire sister said she wasn't feeling well and said she thinks she either had COVID or meningitis and I'm like what I was like how, how? that's a hell of an either or and neither are good like if she thinks she has meningitis she needs to go to the hospital like what the fuck and I, I just sat there and I just looked at Russell and I stared at him blankly I'm like you can't fuck around with that depending on the strain she needs to go to the ER with, with the meningitis if that's what she thinks it is and Russell's like you can't tell anybody in my family anything she's supposed to be getting tested tomorrow and I was just like yeah if she lives that long I was like how bad is this and um, he goes I, d I don't know He's like, I can't do anything about it anyway. He goes, nobody listens to me anyhow. And I just kind of shook my head at him and I'm like, Jesus Christ. So, the next day rolls around and Russell says, he, he comes out of the bedroom and he's starting to go in our room and I was doing dishes and I looked at him and he's like, oh, hey, so... Just so you know, the aunt tested positive for COVID. So we're going to put masks on because I'm in there with my mother and she was the last person that was with her. And I'm just kind of sitting there looking at him. And I'm like, sweetie. Sweetie. Your mother's been here for a week. Unmasked in the house. Around all of us in all of our faces. Quarantining yourselves right now after she's been here for a week in everyone's face is completely pointless. Because if your mom's got it and she got it from your aunt I hate to tell you this but then we've all got it. Because there's no way we don't. And he's like, yeah, but, you know, if it's the original variant, it, it'll, it takes a while to transfer. I said, sweetie, it's been seven days. She's been here. It's pointless at this point to do that in the house. We all have it. And he stopped there. He stopped and he stared at me. He goes, it's been that many days. I said, it's been a week. And he's like, oh, he's like, yeah, I guess that would be pointless. And I said, and if it's the other variant, well, then that can be transmissible in like, you know, an hour, probably less than. So, you know, like, again, it's pointless at this point to do that in the house. And he just kind of looked at me. He's like, okay. So he walked away. Um, the story continued, though. Because it turns out that after dropping the mother-in-law off at the hospital, the sister continued on her journey and went to the other sister's house that lives here in Arkansas. 
and decided to stop in for a visit. Now, this other sister thinks that um, the whole sickness thing is fake. And all that nine yards. Even though her household has already had to deal with it once. No, excuse me, twice. Because Christmas plans were cancelled because half the household had it. Um, and nobody was gonna go there. So, New Hampshire sister goes over there. It turns out that a small child in the household was just getting over it. Or still had it a bit. And that's where she picked it up from. So, I'm like, why? Hi, Zuzu. I don't have any food. No, this isn't food, it's fluff. It's fluff. Why aren't you begging the adults for dinner? Where's Grammy? Where's Grammy? Go! Kitchen! People are out there! Go get all of the things and stuff. I have nothing to give you, sir. So, um, yeah, like, I'm like, really? Now, New Hampshire's sister was vaccinated, but she didn't have the booster. So she still seems to be okay, I think. Um, nobody's told me anything else otherwise. Um, and I'm just like, really? I, I just... I wish we had our own place. I really do. <laughs> I really do. There's days there's just too many people in this house for me. Like, way too many people in this house for me. And so... I had said to Russell, because, you know, I I know how his family can be. I said to him, I said, did somebody tell the New Hampshire sister that she can't be traveling back to New Hampshire with this? Infecting everywhere along the way? Like, she knows that, right? And he's like, well, she's sick. She's not going to be driving anywhere. I said, your family's stupid. I'm sorry, but they are. And I wouldn't put it past one of them to be traveling while they are ill because of needing to close a real estate deal. I'm just asking that somebody made sure she understood she can't be traveling right now. He's like, I doubt she's driving anywhere. She just, she's sick. And I'm like, Russell stop and think about some of the dumb shit your family has done. Just stop and think about it. Bask in it for a moment. I'm just making sure that somebody has told her she can't be doing this. He goes, well, I don't fucking know. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh dear lord. She didn't end up going. Thank goodness. So, I guess that particular sister still has some, some common sense, I guess? Because, like, nobody said how sick she was, so I didn't know if she wasn't get behind the wheel and drive sick, or if she just had the sniffles, like, you know. You never know. I'm like, oh, okay, so, you know, yeah, she feels okay today, but if she tries to drive somewhere and then gets to feeling sicker on the road, and then she's stuck somewhere with, with what's-your-face's car, and, and I'm just like, oh my goodness. We almost had to take care of a puppy on top of everything else, guys. <laughs> 
it, it wasn't our puppy either. Um, we, we can't afford to get a puppy right now. We, it's just, we have enough animals. We need to deal with what we've got going on. And, um, I, I don't want to get another animal right now until we know more about things and stuff in the future, because Russell and I have been trying to figure shit out for, um, in a few years down the road. And, um, a, another animal would not help the planning of that go well. But, um, he said to me, he goes, I need to talk to you. And I was like, what? He goes, um, the New Hampshire sister is talking about getting a puppy. A Doberman Pinscher puppy. And I looked at him dead on and I was like, uh huh. How, why, why do I need to know this? And he's like, well, she's not sure if she can keep it at the other sisters that they're staying with in Oklahoma until they go back to New Hampshire in March. And I just looked at Russell and I was like, aha. Uh -huh. And so they might need to keep the puppy here until they go back. And I was like, aha. Uh -huh. And <laughs> and I was like, right. I was like, you understand that Zuzu does not take kindly to other animals, other dogs being in this house, right? We went through that with Charlie and that was a nightmare. And granted, Charlie wasn't a puppy, but Charlie stood over Zuzu, towered over him. And they got into a fight at one point that I couldn't separate them for a couple of moments. and. Charlie had Zuzu pinned to the floor, and I thought there was going to be blood everywhere by the time we got them separated. I'm like, um, you understand that if there's another dog in this house, even temporarily, it will have to stay in this bedroom. It cannot have free reign of the house. I do not have time or energy to take care of a puppy. The will is not there. The want is not there right now. I've got enough shit I have to do with you being out of commission. And I know us. As soon as you are back on your feet, we still won't have the want or the will to deal with a puppy right now. We just, we can't. And that's not fair to the puppy. Number one. Number two. I'm not taking care of a puppy. That's not mine. I was like, if this puppy comes here, it needs to be fully vetted before it gets here. Because we can't risk this puppy having parvo and spreading it to the rest of the house. Like, we can't do that. That would be bad. And uh, I can't be running the puppy out to pee every hour, two hours? What's puppy bladder? I guess it depends on the size of the puppy. Um, I said, that's all, it, round the clock, that's not gonna happen. I can tell you that right now. I said, your mom is gonna have to deal with it. And it's not fair to the puppy to be in here for hours on end if she goes somewhere and is out all day with no one to entertain it and make sure it's not destroying the bedroom. I was like, has this been well thought out at all? Because if you all are going back to New Hampshire in March, the sister in New Hampshire, a sister from New Hampshire, has another big dog with her right now. It's a Rottweiler that I think is kind of on its last legs, basically. And I'm like, so you're telling me 
you're gonna drive back to New Hampshire in your four-door Toyota with a Rottweiler in the back seat and an old sick of everyone's shit doesn't want to be bothered by anything Rottweiler in the back seat of the car with a three-month-old bouncing puppy also in the back seat of the car unrestrained in not enough time for these two animals to sort their shit and establish a pecking order um you understand where the problem in this lies right like there's gonna be a dog fight in the back of this car have you not traveled with animals that are brand new to each other have you not had to deal with animals that are brand new with each other just inside a house that shit can take a couple months for them to sort out and even then there's some snapping and shit that can happen if someone oversteps like we do understand this right because I know your mom doesn't really do dogs so how is this gonna work and then the mother-in-law goes well we might not be taking my car back to New Hampshire we Loretta might be that's the sister from New Hampshire she might be buying a car down here before we go up and I said well I said it can't be a pickup truck because that's what she had before and there's even less room in the back seat for for a large Rottweiler and a puppy And then the mother-in-law goes, well, it probably would be a truck. I said, a truck or an SUV? Because they are two different things. And then Russell goes, it's probably an SUV. And then and then they're like, well, that's if we decide to do it. And we don't know yet. And I'm like... Oh, my God. I was like, you guys don't think anything out, do you? You can't just whim this shit. <laughs> and then... Russell called the New Hampshire sister the New Hampshire aunt I guess to him and was like yeah we need some more information about this dog before we we okay this and then the New Hampshire sister goes oh well I don't think it's a purebred based off of the price so I'm probably not getting it my heart's not set on that particular dog I just want to get another puppy and I'm like, oh my god, we just went round and round for 45 minutes for no fucking reason and you all upsetting me when she's not even getting this dog. I was like, what? Why? Why do we do this to me? Like, I'm genuinely concerned that you all aren't taking traveling with a puppy seriously. And... If it was just the puppy, I'd be like, fine, whatever. Do what the hell you want. But the fact that it's the old dog and the puppy. That's just a whole nother can of bullshit. That you have to plan for. Especially when you're going to be stopping in hotels along the way. And I'm sure the hotel's not going to appreciate it if there's a, a dog ruckus. Maybe that dog's okay with, with young puppies. Every dog I've ever gotten, when a puppy's come into the situation, a, a, another new young one, they're like, get the fuck away from me. And it is weeks of snapping and sudden barking. And that is not immediate acceptance, so... I 
I'm amazed that I haven't full out laid into any, but like I've gotten close. I've, I've been grumbling at people and yelling at people, but I haven't full out laid into anybody completely. And Russell's been trying to run interference as much as he can, which I do thank him for, but he can only do so much. But. It's, it's a trial. And I swear, there are days where I just sit here and I think, who the fuck did I piss off? Cause, what the hell? Now I have no idea. He says he caught up all the dishes that were there from this morning. I have no idea how much they made from dinner, so I'm gonna have to go and deal with that soon and make my dinner soon. I'm just trying to make sure that everybody's actually out of the kitchen and out from underfoot. I've been hiding a lot the past couple of days because I'm just like, I don't trust myself to speak <laughs> right now. It's it's been a tough one. Not been easy. And you know, and Russell on his own Russellisms, so on top of not feeling well and I've been trying to not give him shit about stuff because you know, he's he can't help some of what's going on. But Because he was getting upset about something the other day. His anxiety was taking over and about something. And I'm like, it's probably just X. Did you check your paperwork? They gave you a whole list of things of when to call if something goes weird. He did call them and I don't know if they ever- he talked to one person. And then they're like, okay, well, we'll have someone call you back. And then I don't think anybody else called him back that day. And I'm like, well, if they're not worried about it. <laughs> then you're probably fine. It might have been another day before they called him back. or he just got lost in the shuffle of callbacks. But he was okay. The boy was fine. Sorry, I just wanted to get a little bit more done on this before we stopped for the day. I might end up putting a little bit more blue in there next week. It is weird just to have the one blue stripe in there. We might put some more in, in here to melt into in this section. feel ya. And good morning, sort of. Hey, Boz. So, yeah, it's just, it's, mm, it's, it's a trial and a half. And I just looked at Russell and I said, it's gonna be a long February. <laughs> and he kind of looked at me and he goes, uh-huh. Because she was pissing him off too, so. She, she did a couple of things that um, really, really angered him, but he couldn't go off on her too hard because he can't sleep in our bed yet because of how squishy our mattress is and he didn't want to fuck up anything that was in the process of healing and have it take even longer to heal. 
so um, she's just a very in in her own brain space a lot of the time and she doesn't stop and think about if I do X how it will affect Y in a lot of those situations I think is the best way to attempt to explain it. I, I don't know, it might just be an excuse. I'm not trying to enable the behavior at all whatsoever. I, I He was proud of me for putting my foot down over the fucking paper plates. He go, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I know they were just fucking paper plates, but I was at my limit. He goes, no, you gotta put your foot down somewhere. And um, he, he was like, I'm fine with it. He goes, I'm not mad about it. Hi, Zuzu. I know you don't have to go potty. I think he's mad because I haven't started dinner yet. But there's nothing, there's no dinner for you tonight. There's no special dinner tonight. I'm making pizza. You can have some pizza crust. But that's about all you can have of it because there's stuff in the sauce that you can't have. But, um, what was it? He's not allowed to lift anything heavy. Um, they said nothing, nothing over 10 pounds while he's healing and one of the cats weighs about 10 pounds and he said when he picked that cat up oh my god did he feel it he said he felt the strain of picking up the cat and that's one of the lightest cats we have so he's like yeah I'm not doing that um so I've had to try to swap the cats out for him periodically and uh the humidifier in the bedroom needed to be filled and apparently the mother-in-law said to him, um, when's it your turn to get the humidifier or it's your turn to get the humidifier, buddy, or something like that. And he's like, what the fuck? How many times do I have to tell you? I can't lift anything over 10 pounds. Now, I don't know if that would have been 10 pounds, but it was certainly, it, it's certainly heavy when you get the water in there. Water's not light. And he's like, how many times do I have to tell you? I can't pick up anything heavy. And she was grumbling about it and eventually ended up filling it herself. I'm like, why didn't you just have me come get it? And, um, and he's like, cause she can fucking get it. So like he was, he was having enough of her shit too. So then later she goes to him and says, well, you're not going to heal or you're not going to get better just laying in bed all day. You need to get up and move. And he's like, what? He's, and I went off about it to him, not you know, at him. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, who the fuck is she to tell you that you need to get up and move when you have explicit instructions from the surgeons and the nurses that did your surgery that said you can't be doing anything strenuous. You can't be lifting anything heavy you you need to yes you do need to get up and walk around a little bit every couple of hours but that's walking around that's not lifting anything and i was just like i was like oh my god i was livid he's like i already laid into her about it he goes you know what he goes, i'm not talking about it anymore he goes i'm pissed off i was like all right and then later she goes, oh, I was just joking. I'm like, what? She plays these mind games with him. Like, she was his voice of authority. His, his sole voice of authority. Because, you know, single parent that she was. So... You know, she, she was law and order in the house. So when somebody that's been your voice of authority is like telling you to go do something who's still older than you 
you know, and they know that you can't go do the thing that they're telling you to do. That's kind of like a real big mind fuck. And he's already got issues and we, we found out why he some of why he's has the emotions that he does at times because of the autistic diagnos diagnosis and stuff and it just <sighs> I just I'm I was like Russell because I know because she doesn't take anything seriously. And I was like, obviously. Obviously. But he's like, I hate it when she gets like this because he goes, I already have trouble dealing with her on a normal basis and then she does shit like this and it just fucks me up even more. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Oh, trust me. I'm just like, wow. But yeah, definitely need an extended vacation. I'm with you there, Boz. Yes, yes, far, far away. Somewhere warm. I know where I want to go for my extended vacation, but I might not ever come back. So, <laughs> I mean, I would have to come back eventually because I wouldn't be able to afford to stay there. But if money was no object, I probably wouldn't come back. I would probably be like, well, good luck, fuck people. Uh, you're, you're on your own. Mm, figure it out. Because I'm done. <laughs> oh, lord. It's just... It's been two weeks. It's only been two weeks. Or just change the locks one day. <laughs> I would like to. But technically, this isn't our house. Technically, it's her house. So it doesn't help that this place has never felt like home. It's always felt like it's... I'm staying with someone else, you know? So it's it's never really felt like home, which makes it harder to decompress at the end of the day. I know that's hard to explain, but, or maybe not, you might get it. But, uh, it does add another layer. When it doesn't feel like home. I don't know if it ever will. I don't know if it's the location, the house itself. I, I don't know. But it's, it's never felt like home. It just feels like someplace I'm staying. Yeah, yeah. And and that that's a whole nother mind hurdle to deal with as well. And I and I don't know, it, it might just be me. It's entirely possible that that's just how I'm viewing it. And I know a lot of people like, oh, home's where your loved ones are, home's not a place, and I'm like I disagree with you to an extent. If it, those things may help make it home, but for me, even though Russell's here with me, it doesn't feel like home. Um, I don't know if it's because I can't really, you know, do what I want with some of the rooms. I, I don't know what the barrier is maybe because it's just mentally I know it's someone else's property. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Only people who are happy say crap like that. <laughs> could be. Could be. 
Like, you know, that, that's in, that, that could very well be, you know, and, and I'm not like that overly, like, um, materialistic, not, not really, um, some things I definitely want with me, but it's not like I have to have this, I have to have that, and, but it's, it's just, it's, it's hard to feel like home in a space that doesn't feel like yours is the only way I can describe it. And I know Boz gets it, but I just, it's a hard feeling to explain if you've never experienced it. So we've been here, what? Uh, it'll be 10 years in September. So you have that feeling every day? Yeah. And yeah, like every day is like that. And and sometimes I question my own sanity. I'm like, is this me? Is this a me thing? Or is is it something else? But um, it, it's tough. It's It's like another hurdle that you have to deal with on a daily basis. Because then, you know, I'm like, well, why doesn't this feel like home? Is it because it's not what I grew up with? It's not in an area I grew up, so everything feels foreign to me? It's not familiar? Or is it something, some other factor? And it's, it's not one I think I can answer. It, it could be a combination of things, but... I don't know. I, I think it's because I've never really felt like I could relax here, maybe? I've always felt edgy here. And Russell doesn't feel it, so it's hard to explain it to him. I don't know if I could explain it to him. I mean, we could paint our bedroom whatever color we want and stuff, but I don't know if it's worth it necessarily at this point. Like, I don't know. Like, in my brain, I've already made plans to do other things down the road. Like, 10... 15 years from now, my brain is like, okay, this is what I want to do. If if things align and we can do this, this is what I want to do. Um, so I don't know. Maybe my brain's just decided we're not staying here permanently. <laughs> it could be. Still got a couple spots in there where it's a little bit thin. That's how you feel. You don't want to waste money to try to make something feel like mine when you just want to cost. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, like, my, my brain's just like, I don't necessarily want to be here. So maybe that's why. It was never really... Um... I was never really keen on moving here, but out of the two options I had, well, three options I had at the time, option one wasn't going to happen. Option two was not healthy to continue. So it kind of became option three. Option three became the only option at the time. So that's how that happened. I feel like we need a little, did I have another? Yeah, I did. But like my brain's like, okay, when we going? 
And I'm like, uh, we, we can't. So instead, <laughs> my only coping mechanism right now, and I don't know, it's probably not healthy, but my, my biggest coping mechanism lately has been going on realtor.com and um, and just looking at potential possible other places to go down the road and seeing if those areas would make my brain happy. Like, oh, is this a viable area? Well, what's around in here? And like, I'll just look up towns and like on Google Maps and I'll be like, well, what do we have that's around here? Is there a grocery store in this town or do you have to go to the next town over? <laughs> and I'm just like, and Russell's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, we're making plans that may never happen, but we need to do something. So, <laughs> and he's like, uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, look at this. Look at that. And he's like, yeah, looking at all this stuff that may not happen stresses me out. He's like, so stop sending me this stuff. <laughs> so I'm like, well, boo to you too. He's like, you understand that by the time we get into a position where we might be able to make these things happen, that these places that you're looking at and showing me will most likely not be on the market anymore. I was like, yeah, I know, but, but at least... <laughs> But at least I know my options and, and what I could get for certain prices. And, and you know, I, I'd like to gauge what you may like or what you may hate. Let, let's see what kind of, um, let's see what kind of things that, that we're okay with together. But, uh, but, but yeah, it's like, like, I want to know the things, like, and then I'll be looking, I was like, oh, well, is there places that, that Russell would eat at? Like, if we don't want to cook that night. And and um, I was like, oh, they have a McDonald's. They have this. They have that. And oh, they have this grocery store. I've heard awesome things about that chain. Like, on the inside layout and stuff. And, and then, you know, it's like, oh, but how much is the taxes? And, you know, how do we do this? And how do we do that? And I was like, he's like, yeah, just, just don't tell me. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> We do what we have to to get by, damn it. That's that's the only thing that I can I can say is that we have to do what we do to get by. And if that's what gets you through another day, like it's funny. I watch this one vlogger on YouTube, and he does a lot of like back road, um, small town, um, vlogs and stuff, and um. When he was doing a lot of like the back road towns in Florida and things, I'd be like, oh, what's that town? I'm like, oh, that downtown looks so cute. I'm like, oh, what's the name of this town? And then I'm like looking it up and I'm like, what do we have on realtor.com? <laughs> I'm like, how bad is the real estate prices here? How, how bad is the land prices if we, we buy a piece of land and do something on our own? Like, because if we can get a lot of land that's cheap enough, a lot, not like a lot as in a large amount, but a lot as in a parcel of land, a lot to build on. If that's cheaper or cheap enough, that's also an option. But yeah, we, we probably do share a brain. I, I'm just glad I'm not the only one that does this crazy ass shit. Especially, like, when I'm trying to, like, before I go to bed and I'm winding down and I'm like, huh, I've never heard of this town before. What do we got going on? <laughs> like, every couple of days I'm on Realtor.com looking at shit. Just, just out of curiosity. A couple of times I've gone back and looked at stuff in my hometown and surrounding areas just to see just to compare prices between 
different states and all, though I know it's hard to compare that because, you know, different areas have different taxes and, and shit, but... It's interesting, and they've added a new feature that I love, which is, um, which is, uh, it's under neighborhood now. I mean, we want to run away the same place. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and, um, uh, they have a new thing under neighborhood, which tells you, um, the noise of the neighborhood, potentiality, and... It gives you the potential flood rating of the area that, that you're looking at. And I'm like, ooh, that's nice. Because sometimes I'm looking at these places and they'll be like half renovated. And I'm like, well, did we just run out of money? Like, why were we renovating to begin with? Because these are kind of some spiffy upgrades. Did it just needed to be upgraded and we're just doing that to sell it? Or what are we trying to fix? What are we trying to hide? And um, then I'm like looking at the flood rating and it'll be like 6 out of 10 and I'm like, oh, right, we must have flooded and this is flood damage that we are repairing and uh, okay, I can see the price for that now. I don't know if I want to get into that, but that's, that's good to know. That's good to know. Because some areas, it's very difficult to get flood insurance in, depending on where you're at. So, um, because I know in Key West, there's like a two or three block radius on the island that's not in a flood zone. <laughs> and that was years ago. So, um, with climate and all, like just about the whole island can flood at times if there's uh, a decent enough storm. So I was like, hmm, if we ever win the lottery and we get a house down there, it's gonna have to be on stilts. So. They actually had a, a private key or a private island off of US-1 in the Southern Keys for sale at one point and I'm like, oh Russell, all we need is like six hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> this place even has tennis courts and an extra an extra building we could rent it out. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, all we need is the six hundred thousand. Has its own private little road out to it and everything. I was like, let's get it. <laughs> Like that would ever happen, but it was funny. All right. Well, I think, you know, that yarn is actually felting really nice. Oh. It's felting really good. All right. Thinking maybe just a little more pink. I was hoping we were gonna get this section done at least today. I don't think we are though, but we might. I think I can go a little bit longer. If we don't get other shit done tonight, or we just won't get it done tonight. That's fine. But. You know, it's like, oh yeah, totally. I gotta do something to occupy my brain at 2 a.m. When I'm too tired to uh, be doing other things like challengers or what have you. It's actually kind of fun to check out some of the the houses on there. I've actually just some of the houses in this area. But yeah, and the house might sink if I'm more Yeah, definitely. It's like, hmm, yeah, okay. And then I've heard of some areas that have sinkhole problems down there, so it's like, okay. And they keep pushing houses in that area, and I'm like, hmm, 
I don't know. I don't know if I want to stay in that town. Since there were some some publicly known sinkhole issues in that particular one. But maybe it's stabilized, but I don't know. But yeah, when houses are too cheap, I'm like, why? <laughs> There's a problem. <laughs> Somebody can't get rid of this. But it's just kind of interesting to see, especially with um, how the real estate market is right now, uh, to see what a property has and the area it's in and what's near it and why are they trying to get this much for it like why is it this price is this just people that are like the market's desperate for property right now so i'm going to start high and see if i get lucky or is there actually is this property actually appraising that high like, would it have appraised that high if the market wasn't quite so crazy right now? So. I know the housing market around us is fucking stupid right now. Like, like so crazy with what they're selling these places at. And for the condition they're in, I'm like, are you serious? You're charging that much? You actually are pending. So somebody is trying to buy you at that price for that. <laughs> I'm just like, the place is a shithole and you, <laughs> like the walls are half falling down. There's water damage on the ceiling. Obviously there's a roof leak somewhere. And this house is pending for like $500,000 and it's a two bedroom. I'm like, what? What the fuck? <laughs> How are you getting that much for that? How is that justifiable? There's no fucking way. And I'm like, these people are just that desperate to move into this area or something, because I wouldn't pay that for the condition that property was in. Like, not for the amount of work that had to be done on that shit. I mean, of course, it might have sold for a slightly different price because you don't see what the property is actually sold for until closing happens and then, you know, if it's publicized in the, uh, in the paper in that area. I mean, it might eventually end up on Realtor.com how much it was actually paid for, but I'm just like, like damn it, Russell, you need to sell. <laughs> If we had somewhere else to go <laughs> and there weren't as many people in this house that we had to worry about we've gotten several postcards in the mail from real estate agents is this your house if you're looking to sell I would like to talk to you <laughs> like really I was like, I don't think you understand what the inside of this house looks like compared to the outside. I really don't think you do. It's a whole different ball game inside. It does not look anything like you would picture it to look between the inside and outside. It just doesn't. But it is paid off. So... There wouldn't be a whole lot lost to pay off an existing mortgage. So there would just be the line of credit that has to be paid in right now. But I'm just, I don't know, 10, 15 years down the road, I'd like to, to move on. I'd like to move on now, but that's not feasible. But. Hoping by then we can get our shit together. And we'll see where we're at. It might be longer than that. I hope it's not longer than that, but it could potentially be longer than that. I 
kind of depends on a few things. Like if we it it kind of depends on um on who's still with us. Cause we can't we can't leave the mother in law alone. Um as much as it pains me to say, uh she's a bit of a hoarder when left to her own devices. And that that's not a good situation. So I will agree to that not being viable. So it depends on a lot of things. Oh, that was loose there. I didn't think that was for some reason. So, and you know, my parents and all. Although, you know. Let's see what happens. A lot can happen in that amount of time. A lot of stuff can happen in a month. Who the fuck knows? I do know that um, we may be taking some. Some we need a time. We need some, a weekend away from you people. <laughs> um, trips, if uh, if our financial situation improves from time to time. Not far, because we can't go that far. Um, especially with the doggos, but we might do like an overnight. I don't know if we can even do an overnight trip away from them because they lose their shit when we go to the grocery store and if we don't tell them if we don't tell them that we're going to the grocery store and we'll be back in like 20 minutes they lose their ever loving minds and will howl the entire time we're gone we've gone for a walk around the block and come back to them howling I'm like guys we're gone 10 minutes if that. What the hell? So. But maybe. We'll see. Because there's some zoo trips I want to do. I definitely want to go see the Atlanta Aquarium eventually. There's some things I want to go back to Florida to see and do, so maybe someday. Maybe someday. All right. Probably laying this one in a little bit thick here, but. Maybe not at the same time. So I think this will be the last piece that we put in because I am starting to get hungry. And Zuzu's had about enough of me streaming today and he's demanding attention, so. Or he's mad that I'm not making him dinner. Some nights we share dinner. If I'm like having rice with my dinner, I will put some to the side for them because that's, you know, safe enough for them to have. It's not flavored or anything. But I think he's mad. That he's not getting that tonight. Or he's mad and he wants to go check his messages across the street on the tree that he likes to pee on. Which, you know, can also be possible. He needs to go check his mail. But I think we've actually made pretty good progress today. Considering we're doing a larger sized piece. And this is a project that does take time. 
takes time to do. So I think we've done pretty good here today. I think we got a little further than I was expecting, but I also went a little longer than I thought I was going to as well. Now remember, next Sunday we might be starting a little bit later because I have to do a blog post for, or I have to update a blog post for Wild Challenges. So I have to get that up first before we can start. It might be done Saturday night. It depends on some factors, but um, I do have a responsibility to get that sorted before we go live with our art stream next week. So yeah, all right. I'm, I'm digging this so far. We didn't get that far into it, but we definitely got a good chunk done. Still need to add some more um, of our yellow down in here and of course on the rest of the side but um, I might bring in a little bit more pink in here I know there wasn't that much pink and yellow happening and mixing in the one that um, Bob's doing there but we're also not doing paint we're doing felt or wool yarn fabric so don't forget to follow all of the things down below. I will be posting progress photos on um, on Twitter as we go. Um, let's see here. Let me see who's doing some things here. Let's go. Who do we want to go visit? Um, let's see. What are these people doing? I don't really know um, what they're doing. I've not really seen this person's um, stream before, but Looks like this person is playing prop and seek. I don't know what that is, but we can stop in and say hello. Oh, prop hunt. Fun. Oh, is that what that is? Yes, yeah, it's, it's essentially a standalone prop hunt game. Okay, so let's so see. So he's, he's trying to pose as that big wheel thing in the hopes that no one notices. Okay. Let Good me... fun. Let me copy that. So let's... see here. Oops, that went double. Alright, so let's go see Wolfy Wolf. And uh, we'll, we'll head on over to there. So thank you guys for hanging out with me this evening and let's go check out this person.